damn it. With a trembling body, Walker cursed furiously beneath his breath. He had performed beyond his usual limits in the examination, and he thought that it would allow him to soar through the ranks. Yet, contrary to his expectations, he still failed to get into the top 50. Not only that, as if adding insult to his injury, it was that Xavier bastard who took the final position, squeezing him out of the elite division. He had been thinking that with the authority he would gain from getting into the elite division, he would be able to teach that fellow a lesson. But as if the heavens were playing tricks on him, the situation somehow evolved to this point. Calvin, it's that Xavier fellow who made a move against me. He was also the one who squeezed me out of the top 50 as well. With clenched fists, Walker complained indignantly to a young man not too far away. Calvin was another candidate from the Matthews clan who managed to qualify for the elite division. He was ranked 46th place in the examination. I know, but you brought it upon yourself. Calvin glanced at Walker and harumphed indifferently. Even I would hesitate to approach those from the Glacier Plain Court carelessly, but you eagerly rushed up to them as soon as you arrived wanting to fawn on them. You were courting trouble. I admit that I was too arrogant and deserved to be humiliated, but that fellow showed blatant contempt for the Matthews clan in public, saying that those from the Matthews clan would put a leg into any affairs that concern a beautiful woman. And you really can't begin to imagine the haughty tone he took when he said those words, too. We can't allow him to get away with defaming the Matthews clan so easily, Walker exclaimed indignantly. Don't even try using those little ploys of yours on me. Nevertheless, regardless of whether he's shown blatant contempt for the Matthews clan or not, he was indeed rather arrogant to make a move on you even after you expressed your identity. Don't worry. I'll teach him a lesson later on and make him learn that just that bit of talent he has won't be enough for him to act so smugly in the sanctum of sages. Thank you, Calvin. Hearing that the other party was willing to step up for him, Walker's eyes lit up in excitement. Calvin's bloodline was far purer than his, reaching the level of Tier 1. On top of that, his cultivation was also significantly higher than his, reaching the Grand Dominion Realm primary stage. If the other party was willing to make a move in his stead, that Xavier fellow would surely be thrashed. Moving on, these are the people who are qualified for the ordinary division. Ignoring the crowd's astonishment, Elder Julius waved his hand grandly once more. Silver lights gathered in the sky, and one by one, names flickered into existence. It didn't take too long for all 450 names of the candidates who made it into the ordinary division to appear. After confirming that Nathaniel's name was among them too, Xavier heaved a sigh of relief. Nathaniel's ranking wasn't too high, ranging in the 460s, but what was important was that he had cleared the entrance examination and successfully became a student of the Sanctum of Sages too. As for the others who had journeyed here with them from the Belisi Empire, Patterson and four others had managed to clear the examination too. Their rankings weren't too good, but on the whole, their group did fairly decent in terms of passing rate. After revealing the students who had made it into the ordinary division, Elder Julius continued. Now I'll be announcing those who are qualified as listening-in students. Then, with a wave of his hand, another list of 500 names appeared. All in all, the Sanctum of Sages accepted 500 normal students, inclusive of both the Elite Division and Ordinary Division, and 500 listening-in students each intake. Soon after the list of 500 listening-in students was revealed, excited and disappointed murmurings swiftly rippled across the crowd. Xavier took a swift look at the list of the listening-in students and noted that four were from their Belisi Empire group too. All in all, 11 out of the 33 had gotten into the Sanctum of Sages, so it was a passing rate of one-third. As compared to the results of the previous years, this could be said to be not too bad. Waving his hand casually, Elder Julius said with a firm voice, Those whose names are on any of the lists, please remain in the area for a while longer. As for the rest, do head down to take a rest. Despite Elder Julius's polite choice of words, 
The authoritative undertone in his voice showed that it was a command instead of a request. No matter how indignant those disqualified candidates felt, they knew that it would be utter foolishness to question Elder Julius's judgment. Thus, they could only depart in dejection. In the end, the Sanctum of Sages wasn't a charity organization, and the true nature of the entrance examinations was to sieve out the proficient from the non-proficient. As an inevitable result of that, there were bound to be those who would be left behind or eliminated. Unfortunately, their failure here would set them behind a great deal. If they wanted to make a comeback, they would have to pay a far higher price than the others. In less than ten minutes, only a thousand people were standing in the square. First and foremost, allow me to welcome all of you into the Sanctum of Sages. Elder Julius tapped his finger in the air, and identity tokens immediately appeared in the hands of every one of the qualified candidates. These are the jade tokens representing your identity. They will be automatically updated to reflect your respective roles as a student in the Sanctum of Sages. Xavier glanced at his jade token before looking at the others around him. The jade tokens for listening-in students were a light blue color. Those in the Ordinary Division had light yellow tokens, and those in the Elite Division, like him, had black tokens. Taking a closer examination of his jade token, he noted a sage symbol carved in sealed script on it, and it emanated an air of ancient yet grand history. There were also some miscellaneous inscriptions by the side of the jade token that resembled the eyes of a human, as if signifying that the predecessors were looking over one. With a flick of his finger, Xavier dripped a droplet of blood onto the jade token, and it immediately fused into it. Instinctively, he sensed that as long as he had the jade token with him, he would be able to freely walk through the protective formations surrounding the Sanctum of Sages without triggering them. At the same time, Nathaniel also claimed ownership of the jade token in his hand, and the elation on his face was impossible to miss. As an offspring from a side family, he wasn't a highly regarded member of the Matthews clan. However, with his successful enrollment into the Sanctum of Sages, there would be a vast change in his standing. Perhaps I might even be able to attend the annual assembly this year, Nathaniel thought with his eyes glowing with excitement. The Matthews clan would organize an annual assembly each year, and only the inner clan members and accomplished members of the side family would be invited to participate. Under normal circumstances, Nathaniel wouldn't have been worthy of receiving an invitation. But now that he had become a student of the Sanctum of Sages, his standing within the Matthews clan would surely ascend to new heights. With his newfound status, he was already qualified to attend such high-tier clan assemblies. This is all thanks to Master Xavier. Knowing that he would have never been able to achieve so much without Xavier's help, Nathaniel instinctively shot a grateful glance toward him. While he was an offspring of the Matthews clan, the Matthews clan hadn't offered him much help in his cultivation and development as a master teacher at all. On the other hand, it was Xavier who tirelessly guided him along, not spurning him despite the hostility he had directed toward the other party previously. He had nothing but deep respect for the young man's character and depth of knowledge. At this moment, Elder Julius's voice sounded once more. The entrance examination might have ended, but I can still see disappointment and regret in many of your eyes. So, the Sanctum of Sages will be conducting a challenge of the defeated to give you all one last opportunity to rise through the ranks. Upon hearing the announcement, the eyes of the candidates immediately lit up in excitement. That's wonderful! All I need is just an opportunity like this. Is this for real? The challenge of the defeated is rarely conducted, so who could have thought that we would encounter one here? This time, I shall become an official student of the Sanctum of Sages by hook or by crook. While it wasn't common for a challenge of the defeated to be conducted, it did occur a couple of times in history, so most candidates were still aware of its existence. The rules of the challenge of the defeated are simple. Listening in students will get an opportunity to challenge a student of the ordinary division and if they emerge victorious, they will be able to claim that student's position. Similarly, students of the Ordinary Division will be able to challenge a student of the Elite Division, and they will be able to claim that student's position if they win. 
Everyone will only get one opportunity to choose and challenge an opponent, and those who fail the challenge will have to suffer a penalty, Elder Julius announced. I believe most of you should be familiar with these rules, so I shall not elaborate too much on them. For those who are still a little unsure, feel free to refer to the identity token you've just received. Refer to the identity token? Xavier extended his spiritual perception into the jade token in his hand, and the many rules of the Sanctum of Sages immediately appeared before him. There was indeed a portion regarding the challenge of the defeated. This challenge was established for the sake of equity. The strong would rise through the ranks, whereas the weak would be eliminated and cast away. In other words, survival of the fittest. However, the act of challenging someone who was more senior to one could be considered a highly disrespectful act, so failure would mean incurring a penalty. There were various types of penalties possible, ranging from paying compensation and enduring physical punishment to issuing a public apology. This was up to the winner to choose. In other words, while it was an opportunity for weaker candidates to rise through the ranks, they had to work within the limits of their strength. Begin! With a resounding bellow, Elder Julius waved his hand, and a round dueling ring gradually emerged from the ground. On the other hand, the crowd swiftly went through the names they had seen on the name lists earlier in their minds to decide whom they should challenge. I want to challenge the candidate who's ranked 500th in the entrance examination, John McCoy. A voice suddenly sounded from the crowd. It was one of the listening-in students. He's Dean, the first place amongst the listening-in students, ranked 501st in the examination. I knew that he'd want to challenge the candidate that's only one rank above him. Well, that's to be expected. Considering how there's only a rank of difference between the two of them, the disparity in their capabilities shouldn't be too great. No matter what, he'd have to give it a shot or else he'd regret it for life. Indeed. Anyone in his position would be reluctant to give up without a try. The crowd remarked as they saw someone amongst them standing out to issue a challenge. It was just a single rank difference, but it made an entire world of difference between being a listening-in student and an official student in the Sanctum of Sages. No matter who was in Dean's shoes, he would have to at least give it a shot. After all, how could one possibly be content to retire just like that when they were only a single step away from reaching the peak. After issuing the challenge, Dean leapt onto the rank. As you wish. A young man also walked out from the crowd and stepped onto the ring as well. Taking a closer look, Xavier realized that the young man was none other than the person who had fought with him over the tiger brew back at the Belisi Empire, only to lose 15 concentrated high-tier spirit stones to him in a bet. The third young master of the McCoy clan, John. In that battle back then, the latter ended up vomiting for a long while due to moving too quickly, and he had been mocked by many due to that incident as well. But over the past few days, perhaps motivated by the experience with Xavier, he managed to take his cultivation a step further, reaching the quasi-leaving aperture realm. While that kind of strength might not mean much against the ridiculously talented geniuses of the Sanctum of Sages, there was no denying that he was also amidst the cream of the crop of mankind. John, what were the tests you faced in the Mountain Gate examination? Uh, what kind of duel do you want to accept Dean's challenge with? Elder Remus asked. The Sanctum of Sages didn't just select its students on the grounds of strength, but an overall evaluation of capability. For this reason, the challenger would have to surpass the challenge in the latter's field of specialty to prove that he was worthy of taking the latter's place. The reason why I was able to clear the selection is due to my attack and speed and might. As long as he can defeat me while his cultivation is suppressed down to my level, I'll admit my loss. John declared confidently with his head raised high. Even though the McCoy clan was only a tier three sage clan, its ultimate technique, golden silk thread, was not to be underestimated. Had he not met with an anomaly like Xavier, the battle technique would have very well made him nearly invincible in his power class. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to clear the Mountain Gate examination to become a student of the Sanctum of Sages either. A fight? Very well. Dean nodded. With a ferocious howl, his cultivation realm swiftly plummeted down to the quasi-leaving aperture realm as well. 
A moment later, the duo was already clashing with one another. Both of them were indeed worthy of their titles as geniuses. Ingenious maneuvers were dashed out one after another, and powerful shockwaves rippled into the surroundings. For the time being, both of them seemed to be equally matched, making it difficult to discern who wielded the upper hand. Master Xavier, who do you think will win? Nathaniel asked curiously. John seems to be in an advantageous position in terms of his skills, Xavier replied. My thoughts exactly, Nathaniel remarked. Then, with a curious gaze, he turned to face Xavier and asked, Right, Master Xavier, what kind of test did you encounter in the Mountain Gate examination? I'm curious to know how you were able to get into the elite division. The young man before him seemed to be a master in every art, be it in terms of cultivation, master teaching, appraising, painting. It was as if there was nothing he didn't know, nothing he didn't specialize in. As such, Nathaniel simply couldn't help but wonder what capability Xavier relied on to get into the elite division. How did I get into the elite division? A look of rumination appeared on Xavier's face before he replied, Well, I guess I slept my way through. You slept your way through? Nathaniel widened his eyes, flabbergasted, unable to comprehend what was going on. He asked how Xavier became a student of the elite division, hoping to learn from his experiences. But the latter told him that he slept the way through. Indeed, not everyone can handle three whole days of it straight. Xavier continued with a tone reminiscent of a forlorn expert who was unable to find a single person who could rival him. To be honest, he never thought that he would be able to sleep for three days in a single go, and he was truly shocked when he woke up. But thinking back, it was well worth it. Even if he were to remain awake, there was also nothing much he could do. There were too many flaws in the divine eyes of the Ninth Netherworld, so he couldn't continue cultivating it. On the other hand, Sage Giovanni, for some inexplicable reason, seemed to be overly traumatized by what he had said as well. Rather than being placed in an awkward position for three whole days, it was a much wiser decision to use this time to refresh himself for his future journey in the Sanctum of Sages. After all, having the time to sleep his fill was a luxury that he might not be able to afford any more later on. Three whole days straight. Nathaniel had an expression that looked as if he had seen a ghost. Master Xavier, you mean to say that while we were busy clearing tests in the mountain gate, not daring to rest for an instant for fear of being overtaken, you were sleeping for three days straight? Indeed, I didn't think that I'd be able to sleep for so long either, Xavier replied with a bitter smile. Despite sleeping for three days, you were still able to qualify as a student of the elite division. Gulping, Nathaniel felt that he was going mad. From the moment he entered the mountain gate, he had been doing everything he could to showcase his talents, fearing that a second of rest would mean the difference between success and failure. Yet the young man before him had slept through the three days, and even so he was still able to make it into the elite division. Could the world be any more unfair than this? Wonderful. Spirit. Heard your master John beautifully done. While Nathaniel was about to explode from shock, a wave of cheering suddenly broke out in the surroundings. Raising his gaze, he saw that the duel on the stage had already concluded. The challenger, Dean, had been tightly bound by the golden silk thread like a cocoon. No matter how hard he struggled, he found himself unable to move at all. John's golden silk thread might have been ineffective against Xavier, but it was still a formidable weapon against most other cultivators. Dean wasn't weak either, but he was still eventually cornered by it. I admit defeat. With dejection glooming between his brows, Dean sighed deeply and conceded defeat. He thought that since the difference in score between them wasn't too big, with a little bit of luck, he would emerge victorious. However, from the looks of it now, it seemed like the Mountain Gate examination was indeed fair and impartial. Its ability to accurately gauge the capability of each candidate was unquestioned. I'm willing to accept the punishment. After being freed, 
Dean left behind these words before walking down the ring quietly. Seeing that the first duel had concluded, Elder Julius asked once more with a smile, Is there anyone else who wishes to issue a challenge? I wish to issue a challenge. The person I want to challenge is the person in the 50th rank, Xavier. A loud bellow boomed across the square, and a figure leapt onto the stage. It's the 52nd ranked Camden. He's the offspring of the siege Lloyd clan. Even though his bloodline is only a tier two, his cultivation has reached the half-grand dominion realm. How could someone like him possibly tolerate having the primordial spirit realm pinnacle Xavier getting into the elite division when he couldn't qualify for it? Indeed, as soon as the challenge of the defeated was announced, I knew that there'd surely be plenty of people who would want to challenge Xavier. Not only is his cultivation realm low, but more importantly, he's taking up the very last seat in the elite division. There's bound to be many people eyeing his position. That reminds me, I just heard news from a friend of mine here. I can't verify whether it's true or not. It said that Xavier never got into the top 500 throughout the entire examination. It was only when the J Tablet of Trials refreshed for the final time that his name suddenly appeared in 50th place, taking up the very last slot for the elite division. In other words, his score just increased by more than 10,000 points all of a sudden. His score increased by more than 10,000 points all of a sudden? Isn't that cheating? Well, we can't say for sure at this point yet. If he had cheated, the Sanctum of Sages would have dealt with him. Hearing that someone had challenged Xavier, a huge commotion immediately broke out in the surroundings. Amidst the crowd, Walker's eyes also reddened in excitement. The happenings in the Hall of Results had begun spreading amidst the crowd, and quite a few people were already aware of the peculiarity in Xavier's results. Every single one of them was interested to see just what kind of unique ability that master teacher named Xavier possessed to be able to qualify as a student of the elite division. Elder Julius and Elder Remus also turned their gazes over. They wanted to see the young man's performance. You want to challenge me? Sure. On the other hand, Xavier didn't think that someone would challenge him, and he shook his head helplessly. With a leap, he headed up the dueling ring as well. As much as he wanted to keep a low profile and stay out of trouble, he wasn't afraid to stir the pot. If someone wanted to take his place, the other party would do well to show strength worthy of doing so. Well, I know what kind of test Mr. Xavier underwent in the Mountain Gate examination. I'll just compete with you on whatever you faced in there. Camden harumphed with a slight hint of disdain in his voice. What kind of test I just underwent? But I just woke up. I don't feel like sleeping anymore. Yeah, forget it. Uh, let's not waste our time then. Why don't we just settle it with a normal duel? Xavier thought about the previous examination he had and shook his head. He had just slept for three days straight, and it hadn't even been an hour since he had woken up. If he were to compete with the other party right now who could sleep for a longer period, he would be in a disadvantageous position. Besides, the crowd wouldn't be interested in watching such a duel either. All in all, it would be much more convenient to settle it with a fight, just like what John did earlier. It would be swift, trouble-free, and more importantly, effective. You want to have a duel with me? Are you serious? Camden stared at Xavier as if he was looking right at a fool. I'm a F-Grand Dominion Realm expert, whereas you're just at the Primordial Spear Realm pinnacle. Aren't you certain that you want to have a match with me? Xavier nodded affirmatively. Very well. I'll suppress my cultivation to the same level as you did. Hamden nodded before swiftly suppressing his cultivation down to the primordial spirit realm pinnacle. After which, he got into an offensive stance and said, Let's begin. Very well, Xavier replied. In truth, it didn't matter much to him whether Camden suppressed his cultivation or not. However, since the other party had already done so, he couldn't be bothered to waste his breath either. It wasn't like there would have been a difference in the outcome anyway. With a swift dash, Xavier's figure suddenly appeared right before Camden, and his hand darted forward to strike him. You! In the face of the palm strike, Camden felt as if the world was crushing down on him. He found that the space around him had been completely sealed, be it his front, back, left, or right, rendering it completely impossible for him to flee. In an instant, 
Camden's breathing rapidly hastened to the point where he was wheezing for air and his face turned completely red. But before the palm strike could land, Xavier abruptly withdrew his hand. Due to the strike and the withdrawal of the palm happening in quick succession, to the eyes of most spectators, it would appear that he was only carrying out a particularly crude fate. But it was such a move that caused Camden's head to turn completely blank in an instant, almost as if someone had used a sword to sever his flow of thoughts. He staggered like a drunk man before collapsing to the ground with a resounding kick. Camden had fainted. What happened? I didn't even sense the slightest disturbance in spiritual energy in the air, so why would Camden faint all of a sudden? I'm not too sure either. All I saw was Xavier's fate. The crowd stared at one another in bewilderment, unable to make sense of the situation before them. The movements of Xavier's previous palm strike were extremely simple, consisting of just a forward thrust and a withdrawal. There didn't seem to be anything particularly ingenious about it, and there wasn't even any gleam infused into the strike. Yet, such an attack left Camden fixated on the spot, not attempting to dodge it at all, and even though the attack didn't land, he still fainted. What was going on? Even though the square was filled with seven-star master teachers, every single one of them was confused by what they were seeing. In contrast to the looks of incomprehension from the crowd, Elder Julius remarked with narrowed eyes, what a formidable palm strike. As a Saint Level 8 expert, he was able to notice what was wrong with the palm strike in an instant. The imposing momentum behind the palm makes one believe that it's a physical attack, but the truth is that it's an attack directed right at the soul and it aims to wedge overwhelming pressure and helplessness into the target's mind, forcing it into a state of extreme tension. And when the pressure abruptly vanishes, the instinctive relaxation of the mind results in a massive amount of blood leaving the brain, thus bringing about a faint spell. Elder Remus also nodded in agreement to Elder Julius's analysis. Indeed, while the mind and body may seem separate, huge fluctuations in emotions can affect a person's physical state tremendously. What this palm utilized is a fear tactic, but still. To be able to make his opponent faint with just a casual strike, devoid of any surge of gleam or powerful emanation of aura, just how precise is his control over his soul energy? As simple as it may seem in theory, carrying it out in practice was fraught with difficulties. Putting all this aside, even he would find it difficult to achieve such a feat if he were to suppress his cultivation down to the primordial spirit realm pinnacle. It seems like there's indeed something extraordinary about Xavier after all. It looks like there's nothing wrong with the results in the Mountain Gate examination. Elder Julius nodded. While it was unlikely for there to be any problems with the point allocation system of the Jade Tablet trials, he had wondered if the young man had received his results through sheer luck. However, from the looks of it now, it was apparent that there was no such thing as luck in the outcome of the Mountain Gate examination. It was either one had the capability or one didn't. When Camden finally roused once more, his dazed look swiftly turned into a face reddened in embarrassment as it dawned upon him what had just happened, and he muttered in disbelief. I've lost. He had no idea how it happened, but he fainted from a single blow. How embarrassing. It's fine, Xavier replied. I'm willing to accept my punishment. Knowing that he had failed the challenge, Camden gritted his teeth. There's no need for that. We're all students from the Sanctum of Sages, so it's nothing much for us to have a casual duel with one another, Xavier replied with a smile. To be honest, he only received this placing due to Sage Giovanni tampering with the score, so it was normal that the other party would harbor some doubts about his strength. Master Xavier is a magnanimous person. It's no wonder why you were able to become a student of the elite division. I'm impressed. Camden clasped his fist and bowed respectfully. To be able to keep an open heart before the skepticism and doubts of others, he was still lacking in his cultivation of the mind as compared to the young man before him. You're too polite, 
Xavier replied with a nod as he began making his way down the stage. However, a voice suddenly sounded. Hold it for a moment. I only wish to try out Master Xavier's hand, too. Turning his head over, Xavier saw a familiar face walking up. It was the man whom he'd smacked to the ground with a single palm before the start of the Mountain Gate examination, Walker. Seeing that the other party was still intent on challenging him despite all that had happened, Xavier's eyebrows shot up. Did that fellow fail to see through my strength? It was one thing if Walker had never challenged him before, but the fact that the other party couldn't even withstand a simple palm strike from him should be sufficient to highlight the vast disparity in strength between them. Yet, to challenge him at this moment, did he think that he hadn't been humiliated enough yet? It's Walker. Wasn't he defeated already? I don't get it either. Why would he challenge Xavier again at this point? Could he have some kind of trump card which he hasn't used yet? Well, he's placed in the 51st place after all. How could he give up without a fight? Most of those in the crowd were also aware that the both of them had traded blows in the past and looks of bewilderment surfaced on their faces. It was just three days ago that Walker was utterly defeated by Xavier, so wasn't it just pure foolishness to challenge him once more at this point? You want to have a duel with me? Xavier shot a glance toward Walker and asked. That's right. However, since you're from the elite division, surely you wouldn't make me fight you with my cultivation suppressed, would you? Walker harumphed. Xavier shrugged. You can choose not to suppress your cultivation if you want to. Very well. Let's begin then. Walker's smile curled up triumphantly as a powerful aura burst forth from him. Huh. Half Grand Dominion Realm. No wonder. Feeling the strength emanated by the other party, Xavier nodded in realization. That would explain why Walker still dared to challenge him despite the humiliating defeat he had suffered the previous time around. It seemed like he had managed to achieve a breakthrough in his cultivation over the past three days. While Xavier was still in deep thought, Walker was already dashing toward him while gathering might in his palm. He had chosen to drive his half-grand Dominion Realm cultivation to its very limits from the very start, and the overwhelming energy emanating from him caused the surrounding air to turn viscous. It felt as if the entire dueling ring had turned into his Dominion, and anyone who stepped into the area would be completely under his control. Not bad, Xavier remarked leisurely, as expected of one of the geniuses of the Matthews clan. Even though it was just an advancement by a cultivation stage, Walker's strength had grown significantly compared to three days ago. If he were to continue taking the other party lightly, he might lose the duel. With a slight tap of his finger, Xavier shot a brilliant burst of sword energy straight toward the palm strike. He was only in the primordial spirit realm at the moment, and due to his lack of cultivation, he could only rely on his comprehension of swordsmanship to rival the other party. The surge of sword energy emanated a chill that seemed to pierce right into one's bones, and it felt as if it would be able to slice through anything that stood in its path. What? Walker didn't expect Xavier to have such a deep comprehension of swordsmanship. He realized that if he were to clash with the sword energy directly with his palm, he could very well be sliced into two. Thus, he quickly clenched his remaining free hand into a fist and threw it forward. Even though this punch was hurled forward all of a sudden, that didn't hinder the fluidity and agility of his movements. At its current speed, it would be able to strike Xavier and severely wound him before the sword energy could reach his palm. He is indeed much more powerful than Nathaniel, Xavier noted. Three days ago, he was able to subdue Walker with just a single palm strike, so he thought that it should be a walk in the park for him to defeat the latter once more. However, considering the current circumstances, he would be underestimating his opponent if he were to continue fighting with such a mindset. Just the speed of the transformation in Walker's maneuver meant that his comprehension of combat had already achieved an extremely high level, considerably higher than an average combat master. Nevertheless, despite Walker's immense growth, he would still require a lot more work before he would be a match for him. 
Lines of insight rippled in Xavier's eyes as he gazed at Walker's movements once more. This time around, it seemed like the latter's movements had slowed down, slowly displaying before his eyes. Through his eye of insight, Xavier also swiftly noticed that something was amiss. Gleam telepathy? There was a thin thread extending from afar, connecting right to Walker's ear. Someone was offering pointers to Walker for this duel. It seemed like this line of communication was established using some sort of unique secret art, making it far more difficult to notice than ordinary gleam telepathy. Had it not been for Xavier's eye of insight, it would be doubtful whether he would have been able to notice it or not. Most likely, this was a means to hide the matter from the eyes of Elder Julius and the others. But still, to possess means capable of deceiving even a Saint Level 8 expert seemed like the Matthews plan was not to be underestimated. Fortunately, the Eye of Insight could track down even the faintest of traces. As discreetly as the matter was carried out, he was still incapable of fooling him. Tracing the line, Xavier's gaze was soon led to a young man beneath the stage. That's the candidate in the 46th rank, Calvin. Xavier recognized the young man as the person who had been sitting with Walker all this while. It's no wonder why this fellow dares to challenge me, and his grasp over combat also seems to have abruptly improved by leaps and bounds. There's no doubt about it, Calvin must be offering him pointers from the back. Processing all of this in an instant, a smile crept onto Xavier's face as he stood calmly before Walker's punch. Instead of dodging, he raised his other hand and tapped full. The space ahead of him suddenly began twisting together, causing Walker to feel as if he had been plunged into a bog. No matter how he pushed his fist forward, he found that he was unable to advance his punch any further. Dominion. Ever since leaving the Belisi Empire, other than guiding Nathaniel along with his cultivation and swordsmanship, he hadn't been idling on his personal growth either. At this point, he had fully assimilated the use of his three-foot dominion into his fighting style. In the past, his dominion took a form reminiscent of a light barrier surrounding his entire body. However, with his enhanced grasp of the technique, he was able to cast a miniaturized dominion around him at will. This way, not only would he be able to alleviate the frightening consumption of Gleam, but the presence of his dominion would also be almost indiscernible as well, making it more difficult to guard against it. With his fist locked in place, Walker's punch fell flat, and Xavier's sword energy continued flying for his other palm. A spray of blood splattered into the sky as the Gleam gathered in Walker's palm dissipated under the severance of the sword's energy. There was a scream of agony as Walker's palm was pierced through by the sword energy and a walnut-sized hole appeared on his hand. Having subdued the other party with a single strike, Xavier took a step back and halted his offense. You've lost. I've lost. You know why? There's no way I can lose. Walker quickly took out several medicinal herbs to halt the bleeding of his palm before glaring at Xavier with eyes reddened in frenzy. A rampaging aura burst forth from Walker, and astonishingly, it felt like he was growing stronger at a rapid pace. In the sky, Elder Remus was overlooking the duel when he saw this sight, and his face turned livid. Walker is tapping into the power of his bloodline. Should we intervene in the battle? It was only a friendly duel, but Walker had gone to the extent of tapping into the power of his bloodline. This could potentially be dangerous for both Xavier and Walker. Instead of responding to Elder Remus's question straight, Elder Julius pointed at the area ahead of him. Take a look at Xavier. Perplexed, Elder Remus turned his gaze over, and what he saw left his eyebrows shooting up in surprise. On the stage, there was not the slightest hint of nervousness or anxiety to be seen on Xavier's face. It was almost as if he knew that Walker would make such a move. A primordial spirit realm pinnacle defeating a half and dominion realm. I'm interested to see what other miracles Xavier can bring us. Elder Julius chuckled softly. It was simply too astounding for a single candidate to earn 12,700 points within two minutes that Elder Julius thought there might have been an error in the Mountain Gate examination. However, 
the sight before him had proved his initial assumptions completely wrong. The young man before him was just that fierce. I understand, Elder Remus nodded. I'll only make a move when he's really in danger. Considering the composed attitude Xavier held toward Walker's outburst, it was likely that he was confident of neutralizing the latter's offense. Since that was the case, it might be worth waiting a little while to see what would happen. While the two elders of the Sanctum of Sages were chatting with one another, on the stage, Walker had finally fully activated his bloodline. Even though his cultivation was still capped at the half-grand dominion realm, his aura had turned far more violent than before, reminiscent of a ravenous ancient beast awakening from its long sleep. With a swift charge, Walker threw his fist toward Xavier once more. Hmm? Xavier frowned. He thought that Walker's moves would change after his bloodline had been activated, perhaps utilizing a more powerful battle. He didn't think that the latter would attack him with just a straightforward jab. Surely such a move would be beneath even the most basic battle tactics. Could it be that the activation of his bloodline had enhanced his strength, but limited the flexibility in the type of attacks he could utilize? If that was the case, was there any point in activating his bloodline? Eh, forget it. I should know the answer soon enough. This will be a good opportunity for me to find out what's so special about the Matthews clan blood. Knowing that it was pointless to think about such matters at this point, Xavier raised his palm to meet Walker's punch. This time, he didn't use any battle speed either. He was intending to clash straight on with Walker. The palm and the punch swiftly closed in on one another, but just as they were about to meet, Xavier suddenly saw something blur across his field of vision, and cold sweat immediately broke out all over his butt. Eye of Insight Sensing that something was wrong, he swiftly activated his Eye of Insight, and only then did he realize that the punch had, at some point, arrived right before his chest, just a split instant away from striking him. Xavier's eyes widened in horror. How can this be? Can a fist even be teleported? There was no way he would have made such a fatal calculation error in battle. Given the trajectory of Walker's punch, it would have to collide with his palm first before getting to him. Yet, to bypass his defense and arrive before his chest in an instant, could it be teleportation? But, as one who had practiced the heavenly art of dimension unravel, even if Xavier couldn't bend space according to his will yet, he would still have noticed the warping in space if Walker had teleported. It was apparent that Walker's punch hadn't resulted in any disturbance in the surrounding space, so it would be safe to assume that it was a perfectly ordinary attack. The situation was truly inconceivable. However, at this current moment, Xavier didn't have the luxury of time to think any deeper into the matter. Dominion! With a deep exhalation, Xavier swiftly retreated with a powerful leap. At the same time, three feet of dominion appeared around him. But before Xavier's dominion could be formed, a sharp ache struck his chest. His body was sent flying backwards, but fortunately, he managed to ward off the momentum of the strike and regain his balance in midair. Nevertheless, the strike had still dealt considerable damage to him, and his face turned pale. And a swift... Xavier clenched his fists in disbelief. This was the first time he had suffered such a huge setback fighting against others. His dominion could be activated at will, which meant that he was able to trigger it in an instant. Logically speaking, the fist still should have been a distance away from him, so why would it strike him all of a sudden? Fortunately, his dominion still managed to impede Walker's fist significantly at the crucial juncture, or else if that punch were to have landed squarely on him, even if he didn't sustain grievous injuries, his fighting ability would have been severely compromised. Xavier swiftly drove his Heaven's Path Gleam to recover his energy while he assessed Walker with narrowed eyes. All along, he didn't think that Walker was a formidable adversary, so he didn't think much of the latter either. However, this setback had taught him that those who had the bloodline of a Sage Clan running through their veins were more frightening than he had imagined. With Walker's current strength, even ordinary Grand Dominion Realm primary stage cultivators wouldn't be a match for him. Where do you think you're running off to? 
with his first strike landing effectively on his foe, a hint of cruel glee surfaced in Walker's eyes. With a swift leap, he dashed forward once more. He had only taken a single step, but for some reason, he appeared before Xavier in the next instant with a fist charged with power. A deafening sonic boom exploded in the air, and it felt as if even space would be torn down by the sheer might of the fist. Heavenly Demon Great Sorrowbull! Knowing that he would stand no chance against Walker through ordinary means, Xavier raised his palm and executed Ancient Sage Coulson's battle. Using the might of his palm, Xavier sealed the space around Walker, intending to prevent the latter from making any abrupt actions. But once again, before the palm could land, Walker's fist had already bypassed his attack once more, appearing right before his chest. Just what's going on? Xavier's face warped and shocked. Under normal circumstances, his heavenly demon Great Sorrow Palm should have been able to overcome the attack with ease. It was as if the other party had known that he would make that move and launched a series of countermeasures before he could even react, bringing the punch to somewhere his palm couldn't affect. Just what in the world was going on? Sword Quintessence, Sea of Blades! With a furious roar, Xavier opened up all of his acupoints and ejected sword energy into his surroundings. Under the furious onslaught of sword energy, Walker had no choice but to withdraw his attack. At this moment, Walker's face had also turned slightly pale, and he was panting heavily. It seemed like the two punches earlier had drained him greatly as well. That was a close one. With a livid face, Xavier swiftly retreated several steps back to create some distance between him and Walker. At this moment, he heard an anxious voice. Master Xavier, that's the ability of the Matthews clan bloodline. Time compression. It was Maya. Time compression. A deep frown emerged on Xavier's face. He knew that the ability of the Natalie clan's bloodline had something to do with space. As the princess of the Nale clan, Eva wielded the Dimension Slicer in her hand as well, which granted her fearsome might. As for the Matthews clan, thinking back, he had never asked Nathaniel about their bloodline ability either, so he didn't know what it was. But never in his dreams could he have imagined that it would be related to the secrets of time. Time and space were the two fundamental building blocks of the world. Without a doubt, a person who could grasp time would have the world in his grasp too. This would explain why, despite his timely reflexes, the enemy still managed to bypass his defenses to land his attacks. Most likely, through burning his bloodline, Walker's fist had affected his perception of time, thus resulting in his attacks appearing to be teleporting to him. In a clash between experts, the difference between life and death banked on a fraction of an instant. If one could compress time, even if it were just one hundredth of a breath, it could play a crucial role amid a titan. With such a powerful bloodline ability, it was no wonder why the Matthews clan was able to remain as the number one sage clan on the Master Teacher continent over the years. However, it appears that burning his bloodline to tap into the power of time drains him swiftly as well. Doesn't seem like he'll be able to maintain this state for too long, Xavier thought. As one who had cultivated the heavenly art of dimension unravel, he knew very well that tapping into abilities that exceeded one's cultivation would drain one's life force or even potential. Fortunately, I have the Eye of Insight, or else those two punches would have surely left me severely wounded at the very least, Xavier thought as a terrified shudder ran through his body. It was due to the Eye of Insight that he was able to clearly perceive the punch trajectory in the nick of time and react accordingly. Otherwise, he would have surely suffered severe injuries. I'll defeat you! While Xavier was still immersed in his thoughts, Walker had already managed to catch his breath, and with a furious roar, he charged forward once more. Xavier swiftly came up with a countermeasure. He won't be able to sustain this ability for too long. As long as I avoid his attacks and put some distance between us, it shouldn't be too difficult for me to defeat him. So far, it appeared that there was a limit to the range of Walker's time compression. So, if Xavier were to resort to long-range attacks instead, he should be able to overcome his attacks easily. With a step, Xavier executed the unbounded Voyager, and reminiscent of teleportation, he abruptly appeared at the other end of the dueling. 
Barely an instant after Xavier left, Walker's punch fell heavily on the area where he was standing previously. Had he been a split second slower, that punch could very well have landed on him. Knowing this was the ideal opportunity to launch an attack, Xavier tapped his finger in Walker's direction. Now, four surges of sword energy burst forth, and they whizzed across the dueling ring to arrive before Walker in less than a fraction of a second. These four sword energies stabbed right into Walker's feet and palms, pinning him firmly onto the dueling stage with their momentum. After doing all of that, Xavier heaved a sigh of relief. It was fortunate that Maya had given him a timely reminder of the matter, or else it would have been difficult for him to turn the tables around on Walker without using his Library of Heavens. Placing his hands behind his back, Xavier gazed down on Walker cold. You have lots. I... Walker's eyes were filled with craze, but just as he wanted to speak, the complete exhaustion of his strength and the severe injuries he had sustained finally took a toll on him, and he caved in. And he had exerted himself too much by burning his bloodline. He had gone all out in hopes of exacting vengeance and acquiring the final slot into the elite division, but his efforts ended up in futility. While the cultivation of the young man before him wasn't too high, his fighting prowess was nothing short of terrifying. A light breeze swept across the square, and a figure suddenly appeared on top of the stage. Kelvin. He took a glance at Walker on the ground, and after confirming that the sword energy hadn't struck any of his vitals, he heaved an inconspicuous sigh of relief. Following this, he waved his hand toward the bottom of the dueling ring. Noting the gesture, Josh hurriedly rushed onto the dueling ring and fed Walker several recovery pills before carrying him down. Calvin finally turned his attention to Xavier, and with a face devoid of expression, he remarked, It seems like you are quite powerful after all. To offer pointers to Walker remotely such that he could at least take a blow or two from me. You aren't too weak yourself either, Xavier replied composedly. Hearing this, a huge commotion broke out amidst the crowd. Offer pointers to Walker remotely? Isn't that flouting the rules? Matthew's clan is getting arrogant. This is too much. Just because they wield great influence in the Sanctum of Sages doesn't mean that they can blatantly disregard the rules like that. The challenge of the defeated was a fight to vie for the precious and limited slots in the Sanctum of Sages. So fairness was extremely important. It was one thing for Walker to burn his bloodline, but to think that he would have another person guiding him from behind. This was a clear infringement of the rules. Not expecting the other party to be able to see through his little moves and even expose them publicly, Calvin's impassive expression immediately darkened as he asked, Do you dare to face me in a duel? Sure, it'll be my pleasure, Xavier replied calmly. He had been rather pissed off at how the other party had been playing little tricks behind his back. Since the other party had come knocking on his door, he didn't mind teaching him a lesson. Good. Seeing that Xavier had agreed to it, Calvin smirked. He stood still on the spot, but for some reason, his figure seemed to tower. His aura swiftly intensified to the point that it seemed as though he would tear apart the seals around the dueling ring. In the next moment, a faint light barrier of roughly 15 feet in radius materialized around Calvin. Standing in the middle of the light, Calvin felt like an indomitable existence. This is a true dominion. Xavier's face turned grim. This was the first time he had seen a Grand Dominion Realm expert casting a dominion. Not only did it cover an area greater than his, but the power pulsating within it was even purer and more profound. The difference in the fighting powers between each realm grows progressively larger as one advances further up in the Saint Realm. Xavier might be powerful. Against a Grand Dominion Realm cultivator of Calvin's caliber, it's unlikely that he will stand much of a chance. Elder Remus frowned. From the leaving Aperture Realm on, the gap of a single realm could mean a difference in fighting prowess by several full. It was for this reason that Xavier could easily defeat opponents eight to nine cultivation stages stronger than him at Transcendent Mortal, but in Saint Realms, 
most of the time challenging an opponent that was even six to seven cultivation stages higher than him was already difficult for him. It was not that Xavier was getting weaker, but the gap between each cultivation stage was simply increasing exponentially. This was similar to how even though the differences between 1 and 2 and 1 billion and 2 billion were both a factor of 2, their differences in terms of absolute values were immense. Such was the case for the primordial spirit realm and the grand dominion realm as well. The four lightning tribulations in between created a vast gap that was nearly unbridgeable between the two realms. In the first place, it was already a huge surprise to see Xavier defeating the half-Grand Dominion Realm Walker. Now that he was faced against the Grand Dominion Realm primary stage Calvin, no matter how Elder Remus looked at it, there was just no way Xavier could win. Based on the situation in the previous battle, he will indeed be no match for Calvin. Elder Julius nodded. As a Saint Level 8 Master Teacher, he possessed a keen, discerning eye. From the earlier fight, he could roughly gauge Xavier's strength. Against normal Grand Dominion Realm experts, Xavier might still stand a chance. However, faced with a genius from the Matthews clan, the odds were that he would lose. Then, Elder Remus was taken aback. Since the outcome of the battle is already clear, why are we still allowing them to fight? As geniuses, they have their pride. Even if we manage to stop them here, Calvin will just find another way to challenge Xavier. Since that is the case, it'd be much better to settle everything here, Elder Julius replied. More importantly, I'm interested to see just how much potential Xavier harnesses within him. If they didn't settle the matter that day, the Matthews clan would just continue to find other reasons to harass Xavier in the future. It was probably given this that Xavier accepted Calvin's duel without any hesitation to. All right, then. Hearing those words, Elder Remus nodded before falling silent. At the very least, if they were to settle their scores in the challenge of the defeated, should any life-threatening circumstances arise out of the duel, they would be able to intervene immediately, so Xavier's life wouldn't be in danger. You can go first. While the two elders were conversing with one another, Calvin was finally done with his preparation. He raised his hand and gestured for Xavier to make the first move. On the other hand, knowing that Calvin wouldn't be an easy opponent, Xavier had no intention of holding back either. With a flick of his left hand, the furious might of the heavenly demon Great Sorrow Palm rushed toward Calvin. At the same time, he also lifted his right hand and tapped forward. Grand Constellation Fate. Executing two Saint Intermediate Tier battle techniques simultaneously, Xavier had gone all out from the start. Standing before the two attacks, Calvin leisurely took a step forward. As soon as the palm strike and the finger art came into contact with his dominion, they were immediately deflected, just like how a river flow parted before a massive boulder. It didn't seem to have caused the slightest bit of effect on Calvin at all. Xavier narrowed his eyes in astonishment. As expected of a Grand Dominion Realm expert of the Matthews clan, the other party was much more frightening than he had thought. What about this? With a furious roar, all kinds of attacks burst forth from Xavier. Palm strikes, punches, finger arts, and many more. In the blink of an eye, the entire dueling ring seemed to have been plunged into an ocean of gleam. The furious assault caused sonic booms to explode relentlessly in the air. Even if it were Walker who had tapped into the power of his bloodline, he would have surely been sent into a fluster from this overwhelming barrage of attacks. But Calvin simply chuckled and waved his hand. Upon contact with his dominion, the barrage of attacks was deflected to his back as well, inducing countless ripples to diffuse on the seal around the dueling ring. He's still perfectly fine even after all that? Xavier felt as if his mind was going to explode. That was way too overpowered. He thought that with that barrage of attacks, he would at least be able to tear open his defenses, yet it barely did anything at all. Was he completely helpless before the other party without a sword in hand? I've already given you a chance to attack me, so it should be my turn now. After deflecting Xavier's attacks, Calvin spoke up before tapping his finger forward. 
A surge of pure energy immediately shot forth from the tip of his finger. Hmm? Accelerated by Calvin's dominion, the surge of pure energy appeared right before Xavier's chest in an instant. Realizing that he would have no time to dodge, he could only hurriedly raise his palm to defend himself. The powerful momentum of the finger art traveled through Xavier's palm and struck his body like a comet, forcefully pushing him back. As a result, a massive gorge was dragged out on the dueling ring. It took a great deal of effort before Xavier was able to regain his balance once more. He felt his gleam running erratically in his body, and as if someone had scalded his palm with a blazing inferno, an indescribable pain assaulted his hand. Even a simple finger art of his wield so much strength. Xavier was alarmed. He might have successfully withstood the finger art, but if this were to go on, the duel would surely end with his loss. Not too bad. The fact that you were able to withstand my attack shows that you do have some capability, Calvin remarked as he raised his palm, preparing for the next attack. At this moment, however, the young man before him abruptly raised his hand high. What's wrong? Are you going to surrender? Calvin asked with a contemptuous smile. That's not it. I would just like ten breaths to myself, Xavier replied. Ten breaths? I admit that I'm not a match for you with my current strength. In any case, it's already unfair that a Grand Dominion Realm cultivator like you is facing a Primordial Spirit Realm cultivator like me at your full strength. So, I want ten seconds to sort out my thoughts. Exhaling deeply, a smile emerged on Xavier's face as he continued, as well as to make a breakthrough while I'm at it. Make a breakthrough while he's at it? Is it possible to make a breakthrough as and when you like? What could he possibly do in just ten breaths? It won't even be sufficient for a short toilet break. Upon hearing Xavier's words, a huge commotion broke out beneath the stage. The various elders in the sky also looked at one another in confusion, uncomprehending what the young man was up to. A typical cultivator would have to find an isolated chamber, prepare all kinds of cultivation resources, and condition their body for many days before attempting a breakthrough. And yet, this fellow asked for a ten-breath break from the battle to make a breakthrough. Fine, I'll give you ten seconds then. Let's see if you have the ability to make a breakthrough within this period. Calvin was startled for a moment before he nearly burst out laughing. He had seen plenty of eccentric people in his life, but the young man before him sure was one of a kind. Great, Xavier nodded. Flicking his wrist, he took out the wintry spirit essence, uncorked the bottle, and swallowed it whole. What is it for drinking? At the bottom of the dueling ring, Maya saw that sight and nearly keeled over. The wintry spirit essence was a cold attribute spirit essence, capable of freezing one's very blood and bones. Even the members of the Glacier Plain Court would just dab a little bit of it on their fingers and slowly absorb it over a very long period of time each time they cultivate. That bottle of wintry spirit essence was intended for several years of use. And yet, he swallowed it whole. While it was true that the wintry spirit essence was rich in spiritual energy, it was simply too cold. Swallowing it was worse than ingesting lethal poison direct. It was in view that the young man was her benefactor and the teacher of their young court chief that Maya had given him a bottle of wintry spirit essence. If he were to die because of that, there was no way she would be able to escape responsibility. Just as Maya was scared out of her wits, she saw that not only did the young man on the stage not turn into a sculpture of ice, but the aura he emanated was even growing stronger by the moment. It felt almost as if a dam that had accumulated several decades worth of water was beginning to crack, ready to let loose a furious flood upon the world. Following this, with a resounding buzz, the young man successfully overcame the bottleneck of the primordial spear realm pinnacle and reached the half-leaving aperture realm. Despite this, the advancement in his cultivation didn't just stop there. It continued surging forward furiously. Two breaths later, he reached the quasi-leaving aperture realm. Maya's face paled and her throat turned dry. 
She was certain that the young man would be frozen to death by the cold energy of the wintry spirit essence, but not only was he fine, but he even managed to swiftly assimilate the spirit essence into his body and advance his cultivation swiftly. Just what kind of constitution did he have? That was frightening. Amidst her shock, Xavier's advancement in cultivation finally slowed to a halt. It seemed like he had finished devouring all of the spiritual energy contained within the wintry spirit essence. To achieve a breakthrough of two cultivation stages within three blocks? Isn't this a little too fast? Everyone stared at the sight before them in a daze. In the sky, Elder Julius and the others also nearly plummeted to the ground from shock. They thought that the young man asking for a break of ten breaths was just a joke. But in just three breaths, he had already managed to advance his cultivation by two cultivation stages. Furthermore, from the looks of it, if not for the insufficient spiritual energy from the wintry spirit essence, he could have very well pushed for even higher realms. Calvin was also dumbfounded by how Xavier succeeded in achieving a breakthrough so swiftly, and a deep frown emerged on his forehead. But a short moment later, the frown gave way to a cold chuckle. You are merely at the quasi-leaving Aperture Realm. Even if you did succeed in achieving a breakthrough, you still won't be able to defeat me with such strength. Even with two consecutive breakthroughs, that fellow would only be a mere quasi-leaving Aperture Realm expert. There was still a huge gap between the other party and a true Grand Dominion Realm expert like... All of a sudden, the deep rumbling of thunder abruptly bellowed in the sky above, and it took only a short moment for the rumbling skies to be covered in darkness. Raising his head anxiously, Calvin saw ominous clouds looming above the square. He can't be thinking of challenging the lightning ordeal here, could he? Calvin's body shuddered upon the realization. Primordial spirits were of the feminine attribute, and they needed to be nourished by the lightning ordeal before they could transform the masculine attribute. Only then would they be able to travel freely without being limited by their bodies. However, lightning was the natural nemesis of all beings with the feminine attribute. Even Calvin had to reinforce his cultivation for more than half a year before daring to challenge the lightning ordeal. But even so, he still sustained grave injuries from it, nearly crippling himself for good. He had to rest for three whole months before he was able to recover back to full health. It was one thing for that fellow to rush his breakthroughs, but to draw in the lightning ordeal on top of that? Was he that intent to die? That's too reckless, Zachariah exclaimed in horror. To be honest, it was no big deal for Xavier to lose the duel. After all, Calvin was ranked higher than him, so it wouldn't affect his status and prestige as a student in the elite division. There was no need to take the risk and rush for a breakthrough at all. This was a foolish action. Perhaps noticing Zachariah's worry, Nathaniel consoled him. Don't worry, Master Xavier will be fine. Zachariah might not be aware of how monstrous Xavier was, but he had experienced it firsthand. So many times, he had worked hard to reinforce his cultivation to push for a breakthrough in hopes of surpassing Xavier, but in the end, the latter would just casually say, I've accumulated enough, and easily achieve breakthrough after breakthrough, steadily widening the gap between the both of them. After all the traumas he'd been through, there was no longer anything Xavier could do that would surprise him anymore. Admittedly, the situation occurring before him was inconceivable to him as well. But, considering that it was Xavier who stood at the eye of the storm, nothing seemed as unbelievable anymore. After all, that young man was a celestial master teacher like Keith Cole. How could an existence like that be gauged using the common sense of ordinary men? Fine. How could he be fine? Do you know that the very first leaving aperture ordeal is the most dangerous to a cultivator? Countless geniuses in history have died because of just... Look at the dense congregation of storm clouds in the sky. I know that he is a person of great capability, but it takes only a moment of complacency to make an irreversible mistake. Zachariah bellowed anxiously. Besides, even if he were to survive this lightning ordeal, he'll surely suffer grievous injuries too. Given so, how's he gonna continue fighting against Calvin? 
Considering how powerful the leaving aperture ordeal was, it was inevitable that one would suffer great damage to one's primordial spirit. And considering how he was already outmatched when fighting his full strength, how could he possibly be a match for a Grand Dominion Realm expert when he was in a severely wounded state? Even without looking at the outcome, it was obvious what the conclusion of the duel would be. This time, even Nathaniel was stumped. He had deep confidence in Xavier, but given how disadvantageous the circumstances were to him, even he couldn't help but wait. My heavens, has Xavier gone mad? Are my eyes playing tricks on me, or is Master Xavier trying to draw his primordial spirit out from his body? All of a sudden, a loud exclamation echoed through the square. Alarmed, Nathaniel turned his head toward the sky and saw that Xavier had drawn his primordial spirit out from between his eyebrows and at this very moment, his primordial spirit was charging right into the congregation of storm clouds. Is Master Xavier intending to face the leaving aperture ordeal with his primordial spirit? That would only put him in greater danger. Nathaniel widened his eyes in shock. Considering that primordial spirits were weak against lightning, a cultivator would stand a better chance at surviving the leaving aperture ordeal if he were to face the lightning tribulation with his primordial spirit housed within his body. This way, the body would at least help to block out a fair bit of the light. Back at the marshlands of the northern meadows, he had seen the deep agony that Hallmaster Bane was put through from facing the lightning tribulation directly with his primordial spirit. Xavier was present then as well, so he should have been aware of the dangers of his actions. Why was he still taking such a risk? While Nathaniel was wondering if Xavier had gone bonkers, the latter's primordial spirit had already charged right into the storm clouds. Countless streaks of lightning flashed within the clouds, fully displaying the treacherous environment within. Under the relentless lightning strikes, Xavier's primordial spirit began moving bizarrely, as if the lightning strikes had caused him to lose control of himself. The leaving aperture ordeal is the first hurdle that St. Realm experts face. The violent energy harness within the lightning tribulation is simply too great such that most primordial spirits would end up succumbing to it, resulting in dissipation. Yet that fellow dashed right in completely unprepared. He really shouldn't have done that. Having gotten into the elite division, he had such a bright future lying before him. But how? Recklessness is the bane for all cultivators. Look at how he's convulsing uncontrollably. This is his very first lightning tribulation, so his primordial spirit wouldn't have the slightest resistance to lightning at all. Even if his primordial spirit doesn't dissipate from this, his sanity will likely be wiped away by the violent force of the lightning tribulation. That fellow is too hasty for success. Wait, wait a moment. Are, are you sure he's convulsing? Well, wh why, why, why doesn't it seem that way to me? Long sighs of lamentation sounded one after another from the crowd. But all of a sudden, that exclamation left the entire crowd stunned. You're right. This primordial spirit isn't convulsing. It's more like... More like... Half a breath later, another master teacher finished the sentence with a shrill voice. Here, he's bathing. Bathing? The primordial spirit amidst the lightning clouds was moving around, but it wasn't a spasmodic movement. Rather, if they had to describe it, it would be more of a rhythmic scrubbing movement, as if he was trying to spread the lightning equally throughout his body, as if he was trying to scrub it into the depths of his primordial spirit. Primordial spirits are naturally averse to lightning, but not only is he unfrightened, he's even heartily bathing in it. Are my eyes playing tricks on me? How could something like this possibly happen? Madness. This was truly madness. Three breaths to push from the primordial spirit realm pinnacle to the quasi-leaving aperture realm, and even challenging the lightning tribulation head-on right afterwards. Their minds could still accept it if Xavier managed to survive the lightning aperture ordeal by a close shot, but to be bathing so joyfully amidst it, no words could even begin to describe the emotions they were feeling at this very instant. This! Elder Julius gulped as his eyelids twitched. 
As an elder of the Sanctum of Sages, he had seen plenty of outstanding geniuses over the past several hundred years, such as the current head of the Matthews clan or the princess of the Natalie. They were the most outstanding figures of the Master Teacher continent, the stars that shone the brightest in the night sky. But not even they dared to play with the leaving aperture ordeal like this. Calvin had frozen in shock from what he was seeing. He thought that it was utter foolishness of the young man to bring forth the lightning tribulation so casually and that he was simply courting death. Yet, the lightning ordeal didn't seem to face him in the least. Calvin suddenly remembered the situation he was in and bellowed loudly, Your ten breaths are... The primordial spirit in the sky seemed to have heard his voice and immediately stopped his scrubbing. He opened his mouth wide and devoured the entire sky of lightning through his mouth before dashing right back into his body. In the next moment, Xavier opened his eyes and looked at Calvin apologetically. Pardon me, it was my first time experiencing the lightning tribulation, and I had a little too much fun that I accidentally took an additional breath. To make up for it, why don't I give you a three-move advantage? From the moment he said those words to his breakthrough in the lightning tribulation, a total of 11 breaths had passed. It was a single breath more than what he had promised earlier, and the fact that the other party didn't try to assault him within this period was honestly praiseworthy. No matter what, he must return the favor. What did you say? Calvin snarled. It was just a moment ago that he thrashed Xavier upside down, but all of a sudden, Xavier was offering to give him a three-move advantage. That was blatantly underestimated. Make your move. I promise you that I won't retaliate in the next three moves you make. Xavier placed his hands behind his back and smiled. You're seeking death. Calvin couldn't suppress his rage any longer. While he wasn't one of the most talented individuals in the Matthews clan, he had a composed and steady personality. It was for this reason that he didn't rush into agreeing to help Walker exact his vengeance. But Xavier's words had struck the thorn in his heart this time around. For the longest time, he had been extremely concerned about the widening gap between him and the other geniuses of the Matthews clan, and Xavier's casual attitude and words of underestimation only served to further remind him of the matter. In an instant, rage consumed his entirety, and he couldn't help but want to tear the young man before him into shreds. Calvin began walking forward slowly. Even though he was walking atop the smooth dueling ring, somehow his movements felt as if he was riding upon a wave. Despite his slow speed, there was an imposing momentum behind his movement reminiscent of the choppy waters of a stormy sea. Previously given his standing, he had decided to hold himself back a little. However, now that he had decided to go all out, his overwhelming strength immediately showed through. It's the Matthews clan's wave-treading stride. Rumor has it that the wave-treading stride was created by an elder in the Matthews clan while he was observing a water strider moving along the ripples in the water. Not only were its movements agile, but it was also well-poised offense and defense, similar to a leaf floating atop the ocean. No matter how treacherous the waves get, it would remain afloat. This technique is similar to shadow tracking, but it's much more profound and grander. Hmm. Since Calvin's gone to the extent of using this technique, it seems like he's started getting serious. Xavier's likely going to be defeated. His ability to withstand the lightning tribulation is indeed incredible, but... His cultivation of leaving Aperture on primary stage is just too low. Such discussions broke out amidst the crowd. While Xavier's breakthroughs were shocking, in their view, it was likely that Xavier had just reinforced his cultivation immensely over the months, thus allowing him to easily take this final step forward at this crucial juncture. As formidable as Xavier had performed in the Lightning Tribulation, his true strength was still bound to be lacking compared to a genius of the Matthews clan, especially given the huge disparity in their cultivation realms. I shall make you regret looking down on me! Calvin raised his palm and forcefully pushed it down upon Xavier. 
This palm may seem unimpressive on the surface, but as the one standing before it, Xavier felt as if a torrential tsunami was towering before him, inducing a slight feeling of helplessness. Saint Intermediate Tier Battle Technique, Air Propulsion Palm. Completely overwhelmed with anger, Calvin didn't bother to hold back at all. In an instant, Calvin had turned the dueling ring reminiscent of the bottom of an ocean. Any movement made within the range of his attack would require his permission. Not bad, Xavier remarked calmly with his hands still behind his back. With an agile flit, he dodged Calvin's lethal attack and materialized at the other end of the dueling ring. After achieving a breakthrough to the Leaving Aperture Realm primary stage, his fighting prowess had increased by at least twofold. While he hadn't tried out how powerful he was at the moment, he was confident that if he were to use his full strength, Calvin wouldn't stand a chance at all. It was for this very reason that Xavier dared to give the other party a three-move advantage. While he only had the Primordial Spirit Realm Heaven's Path Divine Art with him at the moment, the Leaving Aperture Realm Cultivation Technique manuals he had collected back at the Belisi Empire's Black Market, along with those he had obtained from Lorenzo's storage ring, had given him a deep insight into the Leaving Aperture Realm. Even though they weren't sufficient to form the Leaving Aperture Realm Heaven's Path Divine Art, he was still able to compile a decently wholesome cultivation technique man. Furthermore, his diligent cultivation over the past few days had firmly reinforced his cultivation. It was due to all of these factors that he was able to push for multiple breakthroughs so easily after ingesting the potent wintry spirit essence. As for the lightning tribulation, he'd gone through the Saint Ascension ordeal, which granted him significant resistance toward lightning. On top of that, as he cultivated the Heaven's Path Soul Art, his primordial spirit was already masculine. As a result, the lightning tribulation, which all cultivators were so frightened of, was nothing more than a walk in the park for him. This was also the reason why the bathing scene occurred earlier. He wasn't showing off, but rather attempting to spread the lightning over his primordial spirit in the shortest time possible to best temper his primordial spirit. Even so, he still exceeded the time by a single breath. How embarrassing. As for his massive soul, he had used the heavenly art of Dimension Unravel to compress it into a smaller form so it wouldn't stand out too much. Otherwise, if a 30-foot large primordial spirit were to slip out of his body, There was no saying that the lightning tribulation might even be scared into escaping. Do you think that I'll let you run away? Seeing that Xavier had dodged his first attack, Calvin narrowed his eyes and flicked his finger toward the sky. A powerful sword energy burst into the heavens. From this move, it could be seen that his comprehension of swordsmanship had reached a decent level as well, upper sword heart. Halfway through its trajectory, the sword energy abruptly burst into several hundred surges of smaller sword energy scattered all around the area as they surged for Xavier. A battle team. Xavier was slightly surprised. He thought that it was only a casual flick of sword energy, but the move turned out to be a battle technique too. While the splitting of the sword energy would result in each of them harnessing significantly weaker might, such a barrage of attacks was more effective in inducing panic in the opponent. In a fight between experts, one's state of mind was extremely important too. As soon as the opponent started to lose their composure, one would be able to drag them into their momentum and influence their movements, thus gaining full control over the flow of the battle. But while such a move might have incredible effects when directed toward other opponents, it wasn't too effective against Xavier. With another flit, Xavier arrived at the other end of the dueling ring, evading every single one of those mini sword energies clean. You're staunching the only thing you're capable of, Calvin harumphed coldly. Two moves had already passed, but he didn't even come close to catching the young man's shadow. This had borne some feelings of frustration within him. I said that I would give you a three-move advantage, so of course I won't back down on my words, Xavier said with a soft chuckle. You? Calvin's face reddened in rage. Unable to take it anymore, he charged forth again. This time, his speed was several fold faster than before. It was still far from a match against Xavier's unbounded voyager in terms of speed, but it was far faster than ordinary movement. What incredible speed! 
of movement technique is that? It's the highest level of mastery of the wave treading stride. Ripple is treading. He cultivated the wave treading stride to the highest level. Oh, is expected of a genius from the Matthews clan. A few amongst the crowd recognized the movement technique that Calvin was using, and shock surfaced on their faces. The wave treading stride was an extremely difficult movement technique to master. Not only was it highly demanding on one's talent, but it also took much experimentation and practice before one could grasp the feeling. Yet, to be able to reach rippleless treading, the highest level of the technique at such a young age, it must be said that Calvin was truly an outstanding individual. Amidst shocked gazes, Calvin had already arrived at an area less than 15 feet away from Xavier. With a shrill buzz, he activated his dominion and it swiftly engulfed Xavier as well. In an instant, Xavier felt immense pressure crushing him from all directions. It was as if he was grasped in the palm of another, unable to move at all. Xavier's face turned livid. He's indeed formidable. Typically speaking, at Saint Level 6 primary stage, a cultivator would have just formed his dominion and it would assume a form reminiscent of flowing water so the pressure it could exert wouldn't be as great. At later stages, it would take a form reminiscent of a bog, followed by mercury, and finally, lead. As one progressed through the various cultivation stages of state level 6, the prowess of one's dominion would grow significantly stronger. As such, even though the radius of one's dominion would barely change, it was rather easy to classify its strength. While Calvin was only at St. Level 6 primary stage, his dominion was already extremely compact and dense, such that even Xavier would have some trouble trying to blast it apart. It was a grave mistake to give me a 3 minute advantage. Since that's the case, you needn't dream about making a move at all. Calvin bellowed coldly as he struck his palm down upon Xavier. Augmented by the strength of his dominion, this palm strike was at least two times as powerful as before. Even before it reached its target, its sheer might would have already suppressed one's soul and physical body, destroying any thoughts of retaliation. Raising his head, all Xavier could see was a dark shadow looming above him. His movements were restricted by Calvin's dominion, preventing him from escaping at all. If it had been a moment before, there's no way I would have been able to withstand this palm strike without counterattacking. But now... There wasn't any hint of nervousness on Xavier's face, and he showed no signs of counterattacking either. Instead, he simply hugged his body together to protect his vitals. Upon seeing Xavier's actions, the crowd fell into a daze. He can't be dreaming of facing the attack head-on like that, can he? Even Grand Dominion on cultivators wouldn't be able to withstand that blow from Calvin. To attempt to withstand it without putting up any significant defenses at all. Scoring death? I don't know whether to say that fellow is fearless or plain dumb. If one were to execute a battle technique within one's dominion, the might of the battle technique could easily be enhanced to twofold stronger than before. Calvin's air propulsion palm wielded devastating might even without his dominion, and yet Xavier intended to take it head on. If things were to go wrong, he might even be smacked to his death. Should we intervene in the duel? Elder Remus watched the situation anxiously. There's no need for that. Calvin isn't a reckless person. He won't just kill another candidate right before us. Elder Julius's fists were also tightly clenched despite his words, and there was a contemplative gleam in his eyes which made one wonder what he was thinking about. Amidst the shocked gazes, Calvin's palm landed squarely on Xavier's back and a resounding sonic boom burst forth, creating a powerful shockwave that swept into the surroundings. It's over. Seeing that the young man who had just achieved consecutive breakthroughs didn't attempt to dodge the attack at all, many amongst the crowd couldn't help but cover their eyes, not daring to see what had just happened. However, before they could hear an anticipated cry of agony from the young man, another explosion abruptly sounded, and a groan escaped from Calvin's mouth instead. Quickly turning their eyes over once more, they saw the genius of the Matthews clan retreating in a flustered, pale face. His hands were trembling nonstop, and his eyes were marked with horror. What happened? 
Those who had covered their eyes didn't see what had happened previously, and they were baffled by the abrupt change in the circumstance. It's the lightning tribulation, a master teacher amidst the crowd exclaimed in agitation. Lightning tribulation? That's right. Just a moment ago, Xavier's primordial spirit devoured the entire sky of lightning, but instead of assimilating it, he allowed it to wrap itself all around his body instead. Not only was Calvin's palm strike neutralized by that very lightning, but he also suffered a backlash from the it. Just look at his pale face. I reckon that his primordial spirit has suffered significant damage from that previous move. The master teacher remarked excitedly. You said that he allowed the lightning tribulation to wrap itself all around his body to use it to break himself? The crowd staggered. It was true that devouring lightning would help to temper one's physical body and primordial spirit, but there was a huge problem in that course of action. It was extremely difficult to release the accumulated lightning within one's body. Over time, it could slowly wear down one's body, causing significant damage. But when Calvin's palm strike fell on Xavier, he ended up drawing away the lightning within the latter's body, thus sparing the latter from the agony of the lightning while significantly injuring himself. It was two birds with one stone for Xavier. Could it be that Xavier had guessed that Calvin would utilize this palm strike, so he intentionally gave the latter a three-move advantage in hopes of using the latter's strength to draw out the lightning within his body after tempering his body and soul? Someone suddenly shouted. In an instant, looks of disbelief and horror appeared on the faces of every single expert in the square. If that were an intentional on Xavier's part, that would be terrifying. That would mean that not only did he grasp the might of the lightning tribulation well, but he had also seen right through Calvin's strength and personality too. Otherwise, if anything were to go wrong, the one who would be severely injured would be Xavier himself. Can he still be considered a human? Upon realizing what was going on, the crowd gulped as they glanced at one another. A deep fear rose from the depths of their souls. It was one thing to be highly talented, but to be able to keenly see right through others as well? If they were to face Xavier in a battle too, would they stand a chance at all? This is exactly the aspect of Master Xavier that amazes others without fail. No matter how inconceivable a feat is, he's able to pull it off with perfect ease using unconventional methods. Nathaniel's eyes gleamed in admiration. As an offspring of the Matthews clan, he had grown up hearing about the greatness of the young prodigy. As a result, he had grown up admiring the talents of the young prodigy, but at this moment, there was no one else in his eyes but Xavier. No matter how formidable the young prodigy was, it was all based on the purity of his bloodline. How could he possibly compare to Xavier? With sufficient time, Nathaniel didn't doubt that Xavier would be able to exceed the young prodigy and reach the very pinnacle of the world. He's indeed, uh, exceptional, Zachariah muttered in a daze. From the moment Xavier managed to defeat him easily during the preliminary selection, he had already known that the young man was anything but normal. Just, he couldn't have imagined that the young man would be so from the current looks, he would be able to forge a legend for himself even in the Sanctum of Sages, where geniuses were aplenty. Xavier loosened his huddled body and stretched his neck before saying with a grin, You've had your three moves. It's my turn. The attack from the Lightning Tribulation was indeed within his calculations. He had compiled a book on Calvin through the Library of Heaven's Path, and there were several hundred flaws reflected there. Picking one of them out and designing a scheme to do him in was, honestly, not that difficult. With a swift movement reminiscent of a streak of lightning, he dashed right up to Calvin and stabbed his finger forward. A brilliant burst of sword energy reminiscent of a shooting star shot forth, and upon contact with the latter's dominion, it easily created an opening and pushed ahead. Back when he was still at the primordial spirit realm pinnacle, his strength was still too weak to overcome Calvin's dominion. However, after the consecutive breakthroughs, his strength had already far surpassed the limits of the latter's dominion, such that it couldn't impede him any longer. Right, 
Seeing how the sword energy managed to breach the defenses of his dominion, cold sweat immediately rained down Calvin's forehead. With a flick of his palm, he hurriedly took out a sheathed sword to fend against the sword energy. The sword energy collided with the sword sheath and produced a resounding sonic boom before dissipating entirely. On the other hand, Calvin was forced to retreat two steps before he was able to ward off the remaining might of the sword energy. He used a weapon? Considering that it's supposed to be a fair duel, his act of drawing a weapon should suffice for this duel to be ruled as his loss. Although the sage class possess innumerable powerful artifacts in their possession, if those artifacts were to be allowed in duels, they'd become battles of wealth instead of battles of strength. Even though Calvin didn't draw his sword out of his sheath, his very act of taking out a weapon still induced a wave of disapproval from the crowd. Offspring of sage clans had no lack of good artifacts. Any single one of them could easily drive others into despair. For this reason, even though there were no explicit rules banning the usage of artifacts in the challenge of the defeated, there was a tacit agreement among the candidates against it. In the dueling ring, Calvin paid no heed to the commotion of the crowd beneath and quickly popped a pill into his mouth to recover from the injuries he had sustained from the lightning tribulation. After which, he turned to Xavier and said, I must admit, you're indeed a formidable adversary. I might have drawn my weapon, but you needn't worry. I know that you're a cultivator from the Sintrand Empire, so I won't bully you either. This sword of mine is known as Glacial Frost, and as a half-Saint High-Tier artifact, it would indeed be unfair for me to fight you with it, but its sheath is only at Saint Intermediate here. I'll just use this sheath, but you can use any weapon you want. After which, Calvin pulled out his sheath and wielded it. A surge of concentrated sword intent flowed forth from him, emanating a great pressure on those standing before it. Even though he was armed with a sheath instead of a sword, his sheer mastery in swordsmanship enhanced his fighting prowess by more than two full. He's only going to use his sheath? Well, considering that his sheath is a Saint Intermediate Tier artifact, I guess that it would still be acceptable since he won't be relying on the superior strength of his weapon to achieve victory. On top of being a talented sword practitioner himself, he practices the profound sword arts of the Matthews clan too. If Xavier were to accept this duel, there's no way he'd be a match. I've heard how frightening the Matthews clan swordsmanship is as well. Xavier doesn't stand much of a chance against dead. Such mutterings could be heard from the crowd. As a half-saint high-tier article, once the Glacial Frost Sword was drawn, there would be no cultivator of the same cultivation realm as Calvin who could match it, much less Xavier. Naturally, the circumstances would be extremely unfair to Xavier. However, if Calvin were to wield only the sheath of his sword, whereas Xavier could choose to use any weapon, the duel could still be considered fair. How about it? Do you dare to fight me? Calvin looked at Xavier with a hint of provocation in his eyes. You're only going to use your sword sheath, Xavier frowned. That's right. You don't have to feel restrained by me. You can use any weapon you want, Calvin replied, heaping even more pressure on Xavier to accept the duel. We've already competed on movement techniques and battle techniques, so shouldn't we compete on our weapon mastery as well? After all, only with a weapon in hand can a cultivator display his true fighting prowess. Besides, what I specialize in isn't bare-handed combat either. Xavier revealed a hint of hesitation. Indeed, with a weapon in hand, a person's fighting prowess could potentially rise exponentially. Take Seth, for example. Without his spear in hand, there was no way he could have cleared the Dragon Gate formation and become the progeny of combat. Personally speaking, Xavier rarely used any weapons because his opponents tended to be too weak. After all, why go through the trouble of holding a weapon when a punch was sufficient to resolve the problem? May I first take a look at your prowess with the sheath before deciding whether I should use one or not? Xavier pondered for a moment before asking. If Calvin's prowess with a weapon was formidable, he could still consider wielding a weapon. Otherwise, there was no need to take out the Salvatore sword for something as minor as this. After all, it wasn't his hobby to bully the weak. You want to take a look at my prowess with a weapon? All right, then. I'll grant your wish. With a chuckle, Calvin pushed his palm forward, and his sheet immediately flew forth like a prowling snake 
pouncing upon its prey. This was a rather peculiar move, carrying distinctive traits of both swordsmanship and spearmanship. It was ingeniously angled in a manner that aimed to seal multiple acupoints at once. If the strike were to land on its target, the target would surely be incapacitated, losing all fighting prowess and even sustaining severe injuries. Not bad, Xavier remarked as he flicked his fingers forward. Multiple bursts of sword energy sprung forth, blocking the way of Calvin's sheep. It was a melody similar to a torrential shower raining down upon a roof. Watching as the sword energy clashed against his sheath, Calvin's eyebrows shot up as he pushed his palm. With a powerful sweeping movement, the sheath forcefully deflected the sword energy back toward Xavier. Facing this sight, Xavier narrowed his eyes and quickly retreated. It was no wonder why Calvin proposed fighting with their weapons. In just a single encounter, it was already apparent that he was extraordinarily gifted in weapon. Even though he was only armed with a sheath, his pierce was as sharp as a spear, his sweep was as forceful as a pole, and every single maneuver was conducted with the agility and flexibility of a sword. With all these three coming together in a sword art, it became a technique nearly impossible to guard against. Despite cultivating the Heaven's Path battle techniques of numerous weapons, Xavier still found himself in a fluster for a short moment. It seemed like weapon battles were really where Calvin's true forte lay. However, despite how swiftly Xavier was retreating, the sheath seemed to move at an even swifter speed, pursuing closely behind him. No matter how he attempted to swerve and dodge, he was unable to escape from the pursuit of the sheath. That is the wave-treading stride. He managed to infuse the movement technique into the manipulation of his... Elder Julius exclaimed in astonishment. The wave-treading stride was a movement technique that made use of the momentum of the opponent to advance or retreat, reminiscent of how a water strider drifted along with the waves. As a movement technique, it was developed to facilitate the movement of a cultivator. Yet, who could have thought that Calvin would have integrated the technique into the manipulation of his weapon as well? If Xavier couldn't find a way to knock away the sheep, it would continue following him like a shadow. No matter where he escaped to or how fast he moved, it would track his movements tightly, unable to be shaken off. Over on the dueling ring, Xavier had come to the same realization as well. Thus, he executed the unbounded voyager and flitted away. In the blink of an eye, he appeared at the other end of the stage. At the same time, he raised his palm and thrust it forward. Heavenly demon, great sorrow palm. Due to the excessively swift movements of the unbounded voyager, the sheath found itself unable to catch up for a moment when it was abruptly faced with the overwhelming strength of the palm strike. Colliding head-on with it, a resounding explosion sounded. Following this, intense shockwaves rippled from the collision, causing the entire dueling ring to shake non-stop. With this abrupt intervention, the sheath was forcefully shaken out of its previous state. Retracting his sheath, Calvin asked with a hint of pride in between his brows, How about it? Does my prowess with a weapon in hand satisfy your criteria? He had viewed his ability to integrate the wave-treading stride into the utilization of weapons as one of his greatest achievements, and indeed, it was something worth being proud of. Not too bad, Xavier nodded earnestly. Using just a mere sword sheath, Calvin was able to leave him in a fluster for a moment there, nearly trapping him. Truly, as expected of a genius of the Matthews clan, the means that he possessed were indeed formidable. Do you dare to fight against me, Four Round? You appear to be rather proficient in swordsmanship, so I presume that you're a powerful sword practitioner yourself, too. Since that's the case, your fighting prowess should be much greater with a sword in hand. Right. Calvin continued. I'm indeed more powerful with a sword in hand, but my weapon is a little too powerful. I'm afraid that it'll be unfair, for me, Xavier said with a conflicted look. Why don't I use my sword sheath as well? You're going to use your sheath too. A disdainful sneer escaped from Calvin's lips. What I've just shown you earlier is the tip of the iceberg of my ability with a sword. In a real battle, I'll be far stronger than if you were to only wield a sheath as well, I fear that you might be severely injured in the battle. 
that won't happen. You don't have to worry about that. Even without drawing my sword, I'm still plenty formidable, Xavier replied with a leisurely smile. Oh, very well. Let me witness the prowess you can bring forth with just your sheath, then. Harumph and coldly, Calvin raised his arms and a powerful aura burst forth from him. He had started practicing weaponry from a very young age, be it the saber, spear, sword, halberd, pole. He had some degree of mastery in every single one of these conventional weapons, which was also how he could give spirit to a seemingly ordinary sheath, granting it strength that would make it invincible in its power class. And yet, the other party wanted to face him with a sword sheath as well? Was he joking? Are you certain that you want us to fight using sword sheaths? Xavier asked, testing. Of course, you were the one who said you wanted to use a sword sheath too, Calvin sneered coldly. Why are you planning on backing down at this point? It's not that. I'm just a little worried. Well, look out then. I'll be taking out my sword sheath now. With a conflict expression on his face, Xavier flicked his wrist. Calvin was startled for a moment before he felt a mighty gale gushing. Raising his head, he saw a round platform falling right for his head. Before he could even process what was going on, he was already smacked into the ground. His feet, which were barely exposed at the edge of the round platform, were twitching. At least a consoling indication that the poor man beneath was still alive. Nevertheless, this smack should have rendered him incapable of fighting anymore. Seeing that the other party wasn't even able to take a single one of his attacks, Xavier scratched his head and said with a flat tone, Ah, uh, I should have warned you, my sheath is a little bigger than others. For many millennia, the Salvatore sword had been sealed in a mechanical stone platform. Back when he took the Salvatore sword, Xavier didn't neglect to take the stone platform with him as well to serve as the sheath. As the stone platform was the work of a celestial designer, it wasn't ranked in the same manner as artifacts usually were. Nevertheless, if one had to assign a tier to it, it was insufficient to be considered a Saint High-Tier artifact. Thus, from such a perspective, Xavier couldn't be considered cheating. Just, the stone platform was exceptionally heavy, and even Grand Dominion Realm experts would have trouble lifting it. Otherwise, there was no way it could have kept the Salvatore sword sealed in place for so many years either. The fact that Calvin was able to survive having it smacked over him was already a huge blessing in itself. That's his sword sheath? There's a sword inserted on top of it. But why in the world does he have such a massive sword sheet? Poor Alvin. There was a moment of silence beneath the dueling ring, and everyone gulped as they stared at the sight before them with twitching eyes. At the same time, many candidates heaved a huge sigh of relief as well. It was fortunate that they didn't foolishly step forward to challenge Xavier or else the one lying beneath the slab of stone could have been them. In any case, while Xavier's actions were unconventional, there was no questioning that it was within the scope of the rules that Calvin had come up with. Furthermore, Xavier had even given a warning in advance. Ultimately, Calvin only had himself to blame for his tragic plight. Paying no heed to the shocked crowd, Xavier casually flicked his hand and returned his sword sheath to his storage ring, revealing the poor man crushed beneath. Calvin's tongue was stuck out, his eyes had rolled backwards, and his body was twisted like a pretzel. The deep fear that he felt before being knocked out was still firmly etched on his face. His current state was truly wretched. Just as Xavier was about to infuse a surge of Heaven's Path Gleam into Calvin's body to heal his injuries, a powerful gust of wind suddenly blew and a young man leapt onto the dueling ring. Hold it right there, the young man yelled with a livid expression. After which, he walked over to Calvin and placed his fingers on his acupoints. Upon realizing that the latter had only lost consciousness and his wounds weren't too severe, the young man heaved a sigh of relief. He put a pill into Calvin's mouth before waving his hand. 
Calvin's body slowly floated into the sky before drifting into the crowd below. Thank you for going easy on Calvin. I'm Gavin, Calvin's cousin. Allow me to apologize for Calvin's previous rashness. Gavin clasped his fist as he spoke. The impassive look on his face made it hard to discern whether it was an earnest apology or a threatening remark. Nevertheless, Xavier still responded politely with a nod. He remembered seeing Gavin's name on the list of candidates who made it into the elite division. He had finished in 31st place. It's impressive that you possess such strength at your age despite coming from the Sintran Empire. If there's an opportunity in the future, I'd be delighted to trade blows with you. However, I think that most of our fellow peers here must be exhausted from the entrance examination and are eager to rest. So let's not keep them waiting any longer. Farewell. After saying those words, Gavin turned around and leapt down from the dueling ring. His movements were exceptionally nimble, perhaps a sign that he possessed exceptional capability in movement. Since Gavin had departed as well, Xavier knew that there was no point in him remaining in the dueling ring any longer. Thus, he turned around and returned to his seat. With the current fight concluded, Elder Julius turned to the crowd and asked if there were any other challenges. A couple of candidates stood forward, unwilling to part with this hard-to-come-by opportunity to rise through the ranks. Even though Xavier had used questionable means to knock out Calvin previously, his ability to break through Calvin's dominion still bore testimony to his true strength. As such, there were no ordinary division students who were so foolish as to challenge him anymore. By the second hour, there were no more challengers. So Elder Julius stepped forward with a smile and said, All right, your accommodations have been prepared, and you can check them on your identity token. Lessons will officially start tomorrow, and you will be expected to report to your classes. So, take the chance to rest well today. The crowd swiftly nodded in response. Xavier took out his identity token, and when he scanned it with his spiritual perception, a rogue leading to his accommodation appeared. Let's go. Beckoning Nathaniel along, Xavier began making his way over to the Sanctum of Sages. Across the square, there was a set of towering doors with the words Sanctum of Sages written on the plaque above. On the right side was the word Confucianism. Xavier couldn't tell what level of painting it was, but the conception behind those words was extremely deep, to the point that it felt as if he was seeing an entire world through these words were left behind by the first sanctum head of the Sanctum of Sages, Sage Giovanni. Studying these characters will be highly beneficial to furthering one's comprehension of painting, Nathaniel told Xavier with a hint of excitement in his voice. As a seven-star pinnacle painter himself, he knew how valuable these words were. Without a doubt, high-level paintings were hard to come by. After all, there were only so many high-ranked painters on the Master Teacher Con. Even though those words had been there for several dozen millennia, there was not the slightest hint of damage to them. They still looked as wholesome and fresh as if they had just been written a moment ago. These words can absorb spiritual energy to heal any wear and tear on the ink, Xavier noted. He couldn't have expected that the fellow who had been busy whittling a metal bar into a needle in the folded space would have such a deep comprehension of painting capable of writing words with such deep conception. Had he known it in advance, he wouldn't have spent his time sleeping. If he'd spent that time learning painting from the other party, he might have been able to make significant advancements in that occupation. Knowing that those words wouldn't escape from the entrance and he would have plenty of chances to study them in the future, Nathaniel's gaze didn't linger on them. Instead, eyes reddened, he looked at the tall doors before him and exclaimed, so, this is the highest training institute on the Master Teacher continent. Sanctum of Sages, you're finally here. Born in a side family of the Matthews clan, he had put in so much more effort than the members of the main family to obtain what came easily to them. Wanting to be recognized by the Matthews clan, he had traveled down to the Sintran Empire many years ago, just to vie for the slot he would never obtain from the Matthews clan. For a very long time, he had viewed getting into the Sanctum of Sages as his dream, but he also knew too well how difficult it would be to do so. 
He had devoted his heart and soul to it. But not once did he dare bear too much hope, fearing that the disappointment upon failure would crush his soul. However, after going through so much, he had still finally accomplished his dream. Perhaps because he had seen through Nathaniel's feelings, Xavier suddenly spoke up. A powerful bloodline will only put you at a starting line in front of others. Ultimately, to reach the top, you can only rely on yourself. Everyone in the world desired a superior constitution, an overpowered bloodline, and outstanding talent. However, those would only put one at a higher starting point than others. To reach the very peak, what was more important was undying perseverance and unyielding diligence. Xavier, for example, didn't possess outstanding talent, a formidable teacher, or an overpowered bloodline. It would be no exaggeration to say that he had started from scratch. Yet, he still managed to slowly take one step forward at a time from the Olmec Kingdom to the Sanctum of Sages. This wasn't because he possessed an outstanding talent that far surpassed the others, or that he had exceptionally good luck that would get him out of every single quandary he faced. Rather, it was because he had an unyielding heart that relentlessly pushed him forward. Without such an intense desire to grow, one couldn't become a true expert. Yes, Nathaniel nodded. As soon as they walked into the Sanctum of Sages, the first thing that they noticed was that the concentration of spiritual energy in the surroundings was many times higher compared to a moment prior. On top of that, there was a unique aura drifting in the area that seemed to refresh one's mind, granting greater clarity thought. No wonder it can draw so many humans in. It's indeed a blessed land for cultivation. Rich in spiritual energy, as long as Xavier could gather the required Heaven's Path Divine Arts, even if he didn't go through the trouble of searching for spirit stones, he would still be able to advance his cultivation swiftly. In ten years, he would still be able to become a nine-star master teacher and stand at the peak of the world. The place where he was living was not located too far away from the entrance. Following the directions on the Jade Token, he soon arrived at a residence. The concentration of spiritual energy within the residence was even more impressive. Even a non-cultivating human would be able to enjoy an increased lifespan and gain immunity to all diseases by walking in the area. By this moment, Nathaniel had already parted from him. As the latter was a student in the ordinary division, he could only live in the shared dormitory. Naturally, the privileges of the two couldn't be compared. In a sense, the system was rather similar to that of the Imlio Master Teacher Academy. The top students were granted accommodation in manor-like residences, where ordinary students could only live in shared dormitories. However, while Xavier's lodging was much better than most of the other students, as he was ranked at the very last in the entrance examination for the elite division, the residence he was allocated was located at one of the more remote edges, and it was the worst one out of the many others. Walking up to the gates of the residence, Xavier took out his jade token, and the seal immediately opened. Xavier pushed the door open, and just as he was about to walk in, an elegant figure suddenly walked up to the residence beside him and stopped. It was the young woman from the Glacier Plain Court, Maya. Xavier clasped his fist and said, Fairy Maya, thank you for your words of advice during the duel. If not for the other party informing him that the Matthews clan bloodline was time compression, it would have taken him a bit more effort to defeat Walker. Master Xavier, you're too polite, Maya quickly replied. I was only doing what I should. The young man before her was the teacher of their young court chief, and she was also indebted to him due to his revision of the feminine formula. To be honest, she felt a little embarrassed that she hadn't stepped forward to help him when he was in a difficult position. Watching as the young woman unlocked the adjacent residence, Xavier asked, Is this where you're staying? He was in the very last place of the elite division, so it was only given that he was allocated the residence at the very corner. However, he was certain that Maya's ranking was in the 30s, so it didn't make sense that they were living adjacent to one another. I heard that Master Xavier was staying here, so I swapped with another person, Maya said with a smile. Considering that the adjacent residence was the accommodation of the person ranked 49th, it went without saying that the person had been more than willing to swap Maya. 
swamp. Xavier was slightly startled to hear this. Yes, you're the teacher of our young court chief, and you've resolved the most major problem of our cultivation techniques, so you're my benefactor too. If there's anything you need, feel free to request it from me. I'll rush over and have it done as soon as possible, Maya said with a smile. A greater part of the reason was that she was worried that the Matthews clan would make things difficult for Xavier. By living in the adjacent residence, she would be able to look out for him. No matter what, she was the one who had caused the conflict between them. You're too polite. At this point, Xavier came to a realization. That explained why the young woman's attitude toward him had changed all of a sudden. She had realized that he was Sarah's teacher. The reason he dared not say that Sarah was his student was because he feared that an ordinary disciple of the Glacier Plain Court wouldn't be aware of the matter, and it would only worsen the conflict between the both. However, since the young woman was aware of it, that made things easier. Since you know of the relationship between Sarah and me, may I ask if you have a long-distance Jade communication token or something of that sort? I'd like to speak a few words to her, if that isn't a problem. Xavier looked at Maya expectantly. Back then, when Sarah left, he still didn't have a communication jade token to give her. Besides, even if he did, considering the vast difference between them, there was no way his messages could have gotten to her. Since the young woman before him was a disciple of the Glacier Plain Court, she was bound to have a channel of communication to contact headquarters. Perhaps she might just be able to put him into contact with Sarah. After half a year apart, it would have been a lie if he said he didn't miss his student. I do have a long-distance shade communication token here, but from the Sanctum of Sages, it'll have to be augmented by a supporting formation before it can reach our young court chief. This supporting formation isn't easy to set up, and due to my lack of cultivation, I'll require three months at the minimum, Maya said. Three months? An inconspicuous hint of a frown emerged on Xavier's forehead. May I know what grade the supporting formation is? I happen to know a thing or two about formations, so perhaps I might be able to offer some help. Given the long lifespan that cultivators had, three months couldn't be considered a long period. A simple seclusion could easily take this amount of time. But to Xavier, it was a little too long. If it were a simple formation, perhaps he would be able to help set it up to save some time. It's a grade eight formation. Maya replied. Grade 8? Xavier pondered for a moment before nodding. As long as the formation isn't too complex, I should be able to set it up. May I take a look at the formation blueprint? While his comprehension of formations was still limited at 7 star, his foundations were firm because he had studied the Heaven's Path formation art. If required, as long as he studied the formation blueprint carefully, he would be able to set up basic grade 8 primary formations with ease. All right. The supporting formation was a specialized formation to augment the transmission range of the Jade communication token. And it wasn't a confidential secret, so Maya didn't have to hold it back from Xavier. With a flick of her wrist, she passed a formation blueprint over. Xavier took the blueprint and began studying it. To make an analogy to his previous world, if the Jade Communication Token could be viewed as a cell phone, the formation would be a cell tower, serving to strengthen the transmission signals so that the message would be able to travel a greater distance. As simple as it sounded in theory, it was not that easy to carry it out in practice. It's a grade 8 primary formation, and with my current comprehension of formations, I should be able to set it up easily, Xavier frowned. However, I'll still take around three days and the work required for that will be highly intensive. That'll be too troublesome. While his comprehension of formations was already on par with most eight-star low-tier formation masters, there were simply too many aspects that one had to take note of when setting up the formation. The slightest mistake in the amplification of the transmission signal could very well destroy the structure of the Jade communication token, so it was imperative to be careful in every single one of the details. As a preliminary estimate, Xavier deemed that it would take at least three days for him to finish setting it up. Three days just to set up a formation. That was too extravagant. 
Knowing that he was limited by his understanding of formations, Xavier pondered for a moment before coming up with a plan. Looks like it's time for me to take the eight-star formation master examination. It was due to his lack of understanding of formations that resulted in his inability to effectively set up this formation. However, as long as he could clear the eight-star formation master examination and access the books about grade eight formations, he would be able to reduce the time required significantly. Noticing Xavier's frown, Maya asked, Is Master Xavier able to set up the formation? I'm still a little lacking. Xavier shook his head before asking with a smile, Oh, right. Do you know where I can take the eight-star formation master examination in the Sanctum of Sages? I'd like to first take the examination before studying how I can set up this supporting formation. I think it'll be safer this way. As the highest training institute of the Master Teacher Continent, the Sanctum of Sages was bound to house branches of the other occupations. Otherwise, how would the students of other occupations advance their skills here? Most importantly, Master Teachers had to clear the prerequisite for their supporting occupations before they could take the Master Teacher examination. Everything related to the examination of supporting occupations in the sort can be found in the Hall of Erudition. I've looked into the matter previously, so I know its rough location. Why don't I show you there? Maya answered with a smile. I'll be troubling you then. Through the identity token, he had also gained a rough idea of how the Sanctum of Sages functioned. It was divided into multiple halls, each serving a different purpose. However, the structure still differed significantly from that of the Imlio Master Teacher Academy and the Combat Master Hall. The Imlio Master Teacher Academy and Combat Master Hall were divided into respective occupation schools or cultivation divisions such as the Beast Tamer School and Apothecary School for the former, and the Martial Arts Division and Soul Division for the latter. On the other hand, the Sanctum of Sages mainly consisted of five halls, and they had nothing to do with occupations or the sort. They were namely Attainment, Solidarity, Propriety, Erudition, and Integrity. Hall of Attainment, where teachers taught the impartation of knowledge, learning of techniques, and inheritance of culture took place. Hall of Solidarity, a training ground with all kinds of trials to temper one against the otherworldly demonic tribe. It served to promote camaraderie and cooperation among fellow students. Hall of Propriety, the area where duels and battles were conducted. Hall of Erudition, where occupation examinations were conducted and cultivation technique manuals were stored. The place where students would unlock their wisdom. Hall of Integrity, the place where students reinforced their state of mind and tempered their character. Attainment, solidarity, propriety, erudition, and integrity. Graciousness, altruism, respect, frugality, and tolerance. These were the five pillars of the Sanctum of Sages. Students who had come there to cultivate not only had to be strong, more importantly, they had to be principled and cultured. Master Xavier, you're too courteous. Maya nodded before leading the way forward. The Hall of Erudition, despite being termed as a hall, was not an actual building. Rather, like the ten schools of the Imlio Master Teacher Academy, it referred to an entire branch of the academy. Just the type of occupational examination grounds numbered more than a hundred. The duo proceeded swiftly, and roughly ten minutes later, they arrived at the entrance. The first thing they saw was a massive wall that was crafted using some unknown material and carved at the center was a massive word that induced warmth and tranquility in one. Erudition. Xavier halted his footsteps. The letters were vastly different from the Sanctum of Sages plaque at the entrance. Even though it didn't emanate an overwhelming aura, it created a conception of vastness that was as high as the heavens, as broad as a seemingly endless plain. This reflected the broad-mindedness of the one who had left behind the letters, the greatest dreams he harbored for the world. While Xavier was still bewildered by the sense of familiarity he felt from the painting, a voice suddenly sounded in his mind. This is Keith Cold's writing. Vicious, you're awake? Xavier's eyes lit up. The voice came from none other than Vicious, who had fallen into a dormant state for nearly an entire month after consuming the other vicious of the marshlands. Yes. Fortunately, I managed to assimilate that fellow into me. 
Vicious replied with a slightly agitated voice. How are you feeling? Is there any advancement in your cultivation? Xavier asked. Vicious was his trump card, so if his strength grew, it would indubitably be beneficial to him. Master, after fusing with my brain and eyes, my strength has grown by leaps and bounds. In my current state, even Saint Level 7 cultivators won't be a master of me, Vicious replied proudly. Saint Level 7? Xavier was slightly astonished. Just a month ago, that fellow had only been at the Leaving Aperture Realm pinnacle, and yet, just by fusing with his brain and eyes, he'd managed to advance two cultivation realms. This sure was scary. Just what kind of people was he surrounded by? Each of them seemed to be even more monstrous than the other. How pressuring. There was nothing he needed to say about his clone, and judging from what Maya had said earlier, Sarah's cultivation was bound to be far higher than his at the moment. And now, even his subordinate had gained the ability to subdue Saint Level 7 cultivators. After assimilating my brain, I've received a more wholesome understanding of my heritage, especially in terms of soul cultivation. Currently, I have soul cultivation techniques up to Saint Level 9, Vicious said. That's great, Xavier's eyes lit up. The soul cultivation technique manuals he had obtained from Paul only reached Transcendent Mortal, so after reaching the Saint Realm, he had no choice but to stop his soul cultivation for quite a while, after which he managed to compile the complete Heaven's Path soul art for the first four levels of the Saint Realm, and he also raised his soul cultivation to the Primordial Spirit Realm Pinnacle. With the soul cultivation techniques from Vicious, as long as he could find soul cultivation-related manuals in the future, he would be able to compile them together to form complete Heaven's Path soul art manuals and advance the might of his soul. Wait a minute. Suddenly, a doubt flashed across Xavier's mind. Aren't soul cultivation techniques unique to the heritage of soul oracles? Why would Vicious possess them as well? According to what he had gathered from Paul, soul cultivation techniques were a unique heritage of the soul oracles, whereas Vicious was an otherworldly demon. So why would Vicious possess such a deep understanding of soul cultivation techniques, possessing complete manuals of them even? Eh, forget it. There's no point thinking about that at the moment. Knowing that it would be pointless to think too deeply into matters that he didn't have an answer to, Xavier continued asking, Other than soul cultivation techniques, do you have any gleam cultivation techniques? Vicious was an expert who had rivaled Keith Cole many years ago, so the cultivation techniques that he practiced were bound to be incredibly profound. If he could learn them too, that would be deeply beneficial to furthering his fighting prowess. I have a few cultivation techniques, but they're intended for otherworldly demons, so I fear they might not be compatible with your constitution. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'll, I'll send them over to you. After hearing those words, Xavier immediately felt a surge of knowledge shooting into his mind. Since even he was capable of transmitting knowledge, considering how Vicious had assimilated the knowledge of the other Vicious as well, such a thing was bound to be even easier for him. After browsing through the knowledge he had just received, Xavier shook his head. Indeed, I won't be able to cultivate those cultivation techniques. He could still study the soul cultivation techniques, but the otherworldly demonic tribe's cultivation techniques were completely useless to him. There was a vast difference in the physique of a human and an otherworldly demon, and this was a fundamental problem that even the Library of Heaven's Pact couldn't bridge. As a result, no matter how talented he was, there was simply no way he could practice those cultivation techniques. Yeah, what a pity. Xavier sighed deeply. If only he could practice those cultivation techniques, he would have been spared a great deal of trouble, and it would have been more convenient for him to achieve breakthroughs. But from the looks of it, it seemed like it was all a pipe dream. After which, both of them continued chatting for a while. Even though the brain did possess most of Vicious's memories, the immense damage that it had suffered back then, and the passing of several millennia, had resulted in quite a few memories being blurred. For example, he could only remember the vague outlines of the affairs concerning Keith Cole. Knowing that there would be plenty of opportunities to interrogate Vicious in detail now that he was awake, Xavier decided to get back on track for the time being. Recalling what Vicious had mentioned earlier, he couldn't help but ask. 
Right. You said earlier that this word was left behind by Keith Cole. What do you mean by that? Exactly what it means. The word was written by Keith Cole, and it's of a much higher level than the writing he left at the Theta Ascension platform. If I could devour it, I'd be able to call forth power far greater than before. Vicious remark in excitement. Devour? Xavier's face immediately darkened. You'd better wipe that thought out of your mind. Xavier harumphed coldly before turning his gaze back to the word. It was no wonder it looked familiar to him. He had studied the writing he had obtained from Keith Cole back at the Saint's Ascension platform many times, so he was already familiar with the latter's handwriting. Seeing that Xavier had abruptly stopped before the word, Maya explained with a chuckle, This word is wholesome and well-connected, reminiscent of the sparks of inspiration within a person's mind. Frequent admiring of the letters will help to enhance one's analytical ability, thus opening the doors to erudition. I see. Xavier nodded. The word was indeed far more profound than the words Keith Cole left behind at the St. Ascension platform, be it in terms of conception or aesthetics. Even Xavier felt like whatever turbidity was weighing down his mind would be cleansed if he observed it for prolonged periods, thus enhancing his thinking ability. As expected of a work from Keith Cole, in comparison, it seemed like Sage Giovanni's words still needed much more work. No wonder most powerful sage clans are intent on sending their offspring over to the sanctum of sages to study. Putting everything aside, just this writing alone can already stabilize one's primordial spirit and reinforce one's cultivation. On top of that, it can also suppress any inner demons, granting peace and tranquility. Xavier remarked in awe. With Keith Cole's massive words standing guard, even inner demons wouldn't dare wreak havoc. Perhaps... This was the main reason why most powerful clans would willingly send the most outstanding of their offspring to receive the heritage and guidance of the Akata. After staring at the word for a little longer, Xavier turned back to Maya and said, Let's go in. Maya nodded, and the two of them headed in to the Hall of Erudition. After passing several streets, Xavier finally found where the Formation Master examination was held. He pushed open the door and walked in. The interior was exceptionally cold and quiet, and there were only a couple of people inside. This formed a stark contrast to the bustle that the other Formation Master guilds outside enjoyed. There's a strict limit to the number of candidates that the Sanctum of Sages recruits each year, and only Formation Masters possessing extraordinary talents or capabilities would be able to get in. On the other hand, ordinary students would rarely come over here unless they had to take the Formation Master examination, Maya explained. It's better this way. I like the quiet, Xavier replied with a smile. Most of the examinations he had undergone in the past were filled with people, such that regardless of what he did, he would have to queue up. It was troublesome. Are the two of you here to challenge the Formation Master examination? At the front reception, a receptionist who seemed to be in her early thirties stepped forward with a bright smile. The emblem weaved into her robe reflected that she was a six-star formation master. Yes, I'd like to take the eight-star formation master examination, Xavier said. Eight-star? The receptionist was stunned for a moment before asking. You? Yes, Xavier nodded. The occupations of the master teacher continent maintained a very strict hierarchy concerning access to books. Only when one's mastery of the occupation had reached the required rank would one be able to read the books of the corresponding profoundness. If he wished to browse through grade 8 formation books, he would have to become an 8-star formation master first. And with his current proficiency, it shouldn't be too much trouble for him to clear the examination. Oh, uh, pardon me. It's just that you're so young and, and I was slightly taken aback for a moment. An awkward smile flashed across the receptionist's face as she quickly continued. And may I know if you brought your seven-star emblem with you here? I'll help you process your application. Here. Licking his wrist, Xavier passed the seven-star Formation Master emblem over. Catching it, the receptionist took a look at the name and flipped open a book. After checking for a moment, she suddenly raised her gaze to look at Xavier doubtfully. 
According to the records, Master Xavier, it's only been two months since you cleared the seven-star formation master examination. Are you certain that you want to challenge the eight-star formation master examination so quickly? Typically speaking, even the highly talented students of the Sanctum of Sages would require several decades of accumulated experience and knowledge before they would be ready to take the eight-star formation master examination. Yet, this fellow had just barely cleared the seven-star formation master examination two months ago, and he was already challenging the eight-star examination. This was too fast. That's right. Xavier nodded affirmatively. Noted. I've uh, processed your application. All right, uh, come with me. Seeing that the young man was certain of the matter, the receptionist quickly went through the administrative procedures before leading the way forward with a smile. Those who were able to enter the Sanctum of Sages were either from prestigious clans or possessed extraordinary talents. She was only an ordinary receptionist, so there was no way she would dare show any disdain or disrespect toward them. Very soon, they arrived in a room. The receptionist bowed to an elder standing amid the room and said, Elder Rod, Master Xavier over here wishes to challenge the eight-star formation master examination. Weaved into the elder's robe was a formation master emblem and on it, eight brilliant stars shimmered. At the same time, Xavier felt a wholesome sensation from the elder's cultivation, and he found that he was unable to tell how strong the ladder was without the ladder making a move. Given so, it was likely that the elder's cultivation realm was at Saint Level 7 at the bare minimum. Keith Cole once practiced education without discrimination. Those who seek to learn can all become his students. As such, the Sanctum of Sages doesn't just have master teachers, those of other occupations as well. The Elder's probably a pure formation master, Xavier thought. Through reading the information contained in his identity token, he managed to gain quite an understanding of the Sanctum of Sages. While master teachers practice supporting occupations as well, due to their time being divided over a wide span of occupations, it was inevitable that their mastery and depth of knowledge concerning specific occupations would be beneath that of those who specialized in one of them. Every single unique occupation was profound and powerful, such that even the devotion of a lifetime wouldn't be sufficient to explore the depths of it, let alone for master teachers who regarded them as supporting occupations. And the disparity in proficiency would only grow larger and larger as one approached the top. For this reason, the teachers who taught supporting occupations in the Sanctum of Sages were those who specialized in the specific occupations instead of master teachers. This way, the students would be able to gain a better insight into what each of these occupations was capable of. You wish to take the eight-star formation master examination? Elder Rod took a look at the information that the receptionist had passed to him, and a deep frown emerged between his brows. To take the eight-star examination, your cultivation has to reach the Grand Dominion Room at the very minimum but you're only at the leaving aperture on primary stage at the moment. You won't be able to set up a grade 8 formation due to your lack of cultivation. The difficulty in setting up higher grade formations didn't just lie in their enhanced complexity, but the greater demand in terms of gleam purity and capacity as well. For such a reason, there was a strict requirement on cultivation for formation masters. Xavier didn't attempt to conceal his cultivation, so Elder Rod was able to see through it with a single look. Reporting to Elder Rod, even though Master Xavier's cultivation is only at the Leaving Aperture Realm primary stage, in terms of gleam, he pales nowhere in comparison to a Grand Dominion Realm primary stage cultivator. Maya interjected. Elder Rod nodded. If that's true, I guess I can consider making an exception for you. All right, follow me. Having resided in the Sanctum of Sages for a very long time, he had seen all kinds of geniuses. If the young man did possess such capability, it would be fine to make an exception for him. Thank you, Elder Rod. If I may ask, how do you intend to assess my gleam? Seeing that he wasn't shut down on the basis of his lack in cultivation, Xavier heaved a sigh of relief. It would be troublesome if he could only take the examination once his cultivation reached the Grand Dominion Realm primary stage. He would have to find higher tier spirit stones and the corresponding cultivation techniques for them as well. By the time he was done, it would already be several days later. We have a formation that's specially used to assess one's gleam. 
Elderod said before shaking his head in exasperation. However, it was just destroyed by that king of destruction when he came over earlier, and we haven't been able to fix it. King of destruction? Xavier was perplexed by that term. Indeed, he's a student who just got into the Sanctum of Sages a few years back. In his very first year, he challenged the examinations of three supporting occupations and brought about great devastation to all three examination grounds. This is already the third time he's taken the eight-star formation master examination. This is also the reason why our branch appears so cold and quiet. All of our elders have rushed over to supervise his examination, fearing that he'll tear down our steps of formations. Elder Rod rubbed between his eyebrows in distress. Brought great devastation. Xavier was intrigued by those words. What kind of devastation did he bring? In the past, he used to cause an upheaval each time he took an examination, but as the days went by, he eventually calmed down, becoming more dignified and mature. Putting everything aside, just look at how the mountain gate was still standing even after he made his round through it. What kind of devastation did he bring? Those words left Elder Rod snorting angrily. I don't know for the other occupations, but on the three occasions that he'd come over here, he destroyed at least an item each time. The first time, he destroyed the formation plate, which I spent two months inscribing with difficulty. The second time, he destroyed an isolation chamber. And this time around, I thought that he just wanted to try out his strength, but he ended up destroying that strength assessment formation of ours. Honestly, if it's possible, I'd like to ban that king of destruction from setting foot into our branch ever again. To devastate the same location three times? He sure is too much. Xavier widened his eyes in disbelief at what he was hearing. Even the times that he accidentally caused any damage to an examination facility or the sort, it would only be a one-time affair. Yet, that fellow destroyed the same place three times. That was going overboard. It was no wonder why the other party was addressed as the King of Destruction. Indeed, it's just an examination. Does he have to cause damage each time he comes? Oh, you really can't imagine how furious I get each time I see him. Elder Rod slammed his palm on the table furiously. My sentiments exactly. I also find those who destroy public property and make themselves public nuisances abhorrent. But of course, if one were to do it unintentionally, that, that would be a different matter altogether. Xavier remarked vehemently in agreement. It was one thing to do it unintentionally, but those who create destruction with malicious intentions sure were abominable. Forget it. Let's not talk about him anymore. The more Elder Rod spoke about the matter, the more furious he felt. If he hadn't felt so indignant regarding the matter, a person of his standing would have never nagged about the issue before a student like that. After venting his frustrations, Elder Rod turned to Xavier and nodded in satisfaction. You are too bad. Normally, whenever he spoke bad things about the King of Destruction, the other students would fidget timidly on the spot, not daring to even breathe loudly. Yet, not only was this young man unafraid, but he even unabashedly revealed his resentment for the King of Destruction as well. Elder Rod contemplated for a moment before saying, All right, you should stop making some preparations. I'll assess your strengths right now. Preparations? Elder Rod, didn't you say that the strength assessing formation's been destroyed? How do you intend to assess my strength? Xavier asked. Simple. I'll suppress my cultivation to the Grand Dominion Realm primary stage and cross blows with you. As long as you can withstand three blows from me, I'll consider it as your pass. Elder Rod said with a smile. Under normal circumstances, he had the right to refuse a candidate if their cultivation was beneath the mark. Not to mention, the strength assessing formation had been destroyed. But what could he do? The student before him just happened to meet his eye. So, he decided to make a special exception. All right. Xavier was still wondering what kind of examination he would face when he heard those words, and he heaved a sigh of relief. Good. Let's do it here, then. Elder Rod stood up and walked to the center of the hall. The hall was extremely spacious, so there were no problems fighting them. 
Suppressing his cultivation down to the Grand Dominion Realm primary stage, Elder Rod waved his hand and said, You're free to use your full strength. Even though this is an impromptu test to assess if you possess strength on par with a Grand Dominion Realm cultivator, it's still a formal test, so don't expect me to go easy on you. I'll try my best. Xavier nodded grimly. Even though the Elder had suppressed his cultivation, it was very likely that he was a Saint Level 7 expert. Be it in terms of eye of discernment or reflexes, he was bound to be far stronger than Calvin. It would be foolish to hold back against such an opponent. With a swift Z-step maneuver, Xavier dashed for Elder Rod. The movement technique he was utilizing was a Saint Intermediate Tier Battle Technique from the Sintrend Empire Combat Master Hall. It aimed to prevent one's opponent from launching any surprise attack through a constant change in positioning and movement trajectory. Due to the intricacies of the movement technique, there were very few who would use it in a real battle. However, Xavier managed to integrate it perfectly into his attack, flitting swiftly from left to right as if a specter. Not bad. Elder Rod's eyes lit up. Considering how the young man before him was only at the Leaving Aperture Realm primary stage, he had thought that it was an exaggeration to say that the young man possessed strength on par with a Grand Dominion Realm cultivator. However, looking at the swiftly moving silhouette before him, he realized that there might be some credence to those words after all. While harboring such thoughts, Elder Rod released a powerful surge of energy from his body, forming a dominion of a 15-foot radius around him. Shrouded within a dominion, Xavier's movements immediately slowed down as if he had descended into a bog. I'm going to be making my move. The first attack will be the palm of the elephant dragon. It's a technique that harnesses the might of elephants and dragons, and further enhanced by my dominion, it won't be easy for you to overcome it. So, do be careful. The young man before him had heartily listened to his grumbles and even displayed enmity toward the King of Destruction as well. This had left him with a deep feeling of goodwill for the young man, as such, even though he wasn't planning on going easy, his very warning showed his concern and care for the young man. I'll give it my all. Hearing that, Xavier immediately felt adrenaline rush through his body. With a swift flit, he executed the unbounded Voyager. Fighting against Calvin had also given him a deeper insight into how a Dominion worked. In essence, being impeded by a Dominion was somewhat equivalent to having a force acting against one. In a sense, it could be viewed as a rope pulling one back, hindering one from making any movement. However, while the rope was taut on one end, it would be relatively slackened on the other. The reason why Xavier had used a Z movement earlier was to draw Elder Rod's attention into impeding his sideward movement so that the abrupt use of the unbounded Voyager would be able to catch Elder Rod off guard. And, as expected, before the latter could process what was going on, he had already managed to close the gap between the both of them. With a flick of his wrist, he attacked with a palm strike of his own. The other party had said that the palm of the elephant dragon wielded immense strength. So, just to be cautious, he used the most powerful palm art he knew against it in retaliation. Heavenly Demon Great Sorrow Palm. The two palms collided with one another. What? Not expecting the other party to close in the distance between the both of them so swiftly, and even execute such a powerful palm art, Elder Rod's eyes narrowed in alarm. Before he could even speak, a force harnessing crushing momentum was already crashing down on him. How could he be so powerful? Feeling as if he had been struck by a comet, Elder Rod's lips twitched. In the instant of collision, he felt as if someone had shattered every single bone in his body, and he was immediately sent flying backwards. In midair, he attempted to unseal his cultivation to ward off the momentum of the attack, but the relentless might of the palm crushing down on him denied him any chance of doing so. He crashed heavily into the wall of the room, creating a massive hole behind him. Due to the overwhelming might of the crash, a massive crack swiftly crept up the wall all the way up to the roof.